Lopes. They finish so with a big 82-70 win over LaSalle. They were absolutely fantastic in that basketball game, start to finish. They really had their focus. I love the fact that they went inside for 38 points. They also had a huge contribution off their bench, 43-12 advantage. Yeah, that depth, nine or ten players that Marley has to work with. One of those starters, though, and a guy that has stepped up with a big double-double against LaSalle was Alessandro Labor. Alessandro Labor is really doing some good things on the basketball floor. He knew he's got the ability to shoot from outside. Uh, that really spreads the defense out. But I like when he goes inside and bangs down low, plays with his back to the basket, he creates so many opportunities for the inside-out game to start to gel. 31 minutes, 17 points, 10 rebounds for Ali Labor in that starting role, the big man for the Lopes. But how about a guy coming off the bench and playing a, uh, well, he had CJ. some 28 minutes, Carlos Johnson, and he put up some big time points, had 16 points in the game. I'm a big fan of what CJ has been doing off the bench because he didn't hang his head when he went to the bench after losing his starting position. He said, this is an opportunity for me to really help the squad, the second group that comes in with my scoring ability. And it's not just shooting, creating shots for himself like that. He goes on the offensive boards, he scraps inside, he gets an easy hard fought, or a hard fought bucket on the inside. Four of five from the free throw line, 16 and seven for Carlos Johnson, that instant offense, adding some big punch coming off of the bench now for CJ. Boise State, the Broncos come in two and four, but they've got six straight 20 plus win seasons. And RJ Williams is the guy we're gonna be taking a look at with Boise State. Boy, they, uh, they tore it up some 23 wins a season ago. Yeah, they're very good the last six years, like you said, 20 plus wins. They put a player in the first round of the NBA draft last year to Chicago. Bulls. This is a team that knows how to compete at a high level. Really got to watch R.J. Williams. He's an absolute fantastic three-point shooter. Uh, really likes to shoot the long ball. There's 15 points per game and 7.6 rebounds. He's a live wire. Constant motion. They lost three starters from a season ago, but Boise State always tough. Here on a wideout, you can sense the uh, intensity has been turned up as the Lopes return to their home court here at GC Arena. Kate, we'll send it back upstairs to you. All right, thank you guys. And real quick before you go, Scott, when you look at the strength of schedule for the Lopes right now and the top ranked teams are going up against the next couple weeks, do you see this as a chance for Dan Marley's squad to go out there right now and truly make a statement? Can they do that? Absolutely, Kate. This is exactly what Coach Marley wants. He wants his team to have a national spotlight and go up against this type of quality of programs. If you want to be one of these mid-majors that eventually cracks the top 25 nationally, you got to beat these type of opponents. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And very like you said, when you just walked into the arena tonight, you can sense that intensity, that urgency this team is playing for coming off that Wooden Legacy Classic Tournament. They are ready to claim their home court. And when there is a whiteout at any sports venue, you just feel the excitement. And that's what's going on right now inside GCU Arena. So how is Dan Marley feeling? Well, right after this break, our very own Barry Patel goes one-on-one -on -one with the head coach to get the lowdown. What's coming up tonight with Boise State Broncos and how the team is rebounding after their trip to California. That's right after this. It's that time again. Time to be thankful. Time to be with loved ones. Family Christmas and family traditions. Now's the time to make room for what's really important. The years go by fast and the holidays even faster. This is your season. Seize it. GCU's online degree program puts you first so you can make the most of your time. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. About time you washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson. <laughs> Be sure to get out and support the Lopes next Saturday, December 9th at 3.30 when they take on the number five ranked Nevada Wolf Pack as part of the Jerry Colangelo Classic. The Pack are coming off a Sweet 16 appearance last season and are led by head coach Eric Musselman and twins Caleb and Cody Martin. 
number one ranked Gonzaga will take on number six ranked Tennessee at 1 p.m. Phoenix will be the center of the college basketball universe on this day. Great tickets still available by going to gculopes.com slash events or by contacting the GCU sales ticket office at 602-639-8979. Lopes pregame show rolls along from GCU Arena tonight. The Lopes return home to take on the Broncos from Boise State. Barry Butel alongside the head coach, Dan Marley. And coach, uh, coming back one and two after a Wooden Legacy Classic. Uh, you close it out with a pretty decisive victory over LaSalle. How your thoughts about the tournament? Uh, I would say disappointed, but also pleased. Uh, you know, Seton Hall, we were right there, had a chance to win that game, and just couldn't put it away in the last minute. They went on to win the tournament, and uh, they were a very good program. And then, uh, you know, lost against Utah, fought back against them. And then, as you said, LaSalle, a uh, team that presses and gets after you, uh, and we closed out with a win. So disappointed we didn't win more. We had chances. But overall, I thought we, uh, you know, showed out pretty well. The uh, Seton Hall, they went on to win it. You guys uh, had that lead late against uh, uh, Seton Hall, but Miles Powell certainly. Uh, yeah, yeah, up. he had an unbelievable. He had 40, uh, 40 points on 16 shots, but uh, you know, we right had it right there. We had the, the lead with a minute to go, couldn't get a rebound, and then uh, threw the ball in the alley, having to miss a layup, and that could have put us up two with about 29 seconds to go. And as I said, just couldn't close it out, but uh, just goes to show that we can play, and uh, we just got to find a way to close out games. And win. How about all these uh, tournament play? You have that double double. We don't want to turn it. It's coming around. You know, you know, at the beginning it was a little bit uh, tough for Ali, and it just keeps on working. And we knew he'd do that. He's starting to find his uh, rhythm a little bit as guys are starting to figure out uh, how to play with him, the new guys. So uh, I'm excited for Alessandro. He's going to have to play really well this season for us to be good. And he continues to work hard, and uh, I'm proud of him. He does a good job. One guy that came off the bench and has provided a, a spark here is Damari Milstead. Uh, Double-digit scoring, had some quality minutes. Yeah, Damari's going to have to play well. I mean, him and Trey are going to share the point guard spot. It doesn't really matter who starts. They're both going to play uh, uh, significant minutes, and Damari did. He came off the bench and did a really good job offensively getting to the basket and scoring. Uh, defensively, on ball, he's really good. He's got a lot to improve off ball. Uh, has to do a better job of getting other guys involved and sometimes keeping his head up, but he put, provided a great spark for us as far as going, coming in and scoring and, and handling the pressure against LaSalle. Another guy coming off the bench now is Carlos Johnson providing the spark. He played some quality minutes as well. Yeah, you know, Carlos just got to keep working. Uh, you know, he had been struggling starting a little bit, so we wanted to change him up and, and bring him off the bench and provide a spark for that second group. And uh, the thing about Carlos is he's got to uh, uh, go to the basket more, you know, just uh, put his head down, uh, either post up or drive. And then when he sees the ball go in a few times, then he can uh, shoot wide open threes. I thought at the beginning uh, of the season, especially, he relied too much on his outside shooting. And that's not really his game, not to say that he can't make those shots, because he can, but I think it's more important for him to use his size and his athletic ability to get to the, uh, get to the, to the basket. This is uh, the first of uh, many upcoming games now. You're really in the teeth of the non-conference schedule. You take on a Boise State team that uh, had six straight 20-plus win seasons. Then Nevada downtown at Talking Stick. Travel to Texas and Northern Iowa. Yeah, that's just that's a daunting schedule, but that's what we wanted. We really wanted to test ourselves in the non-conference, and you know, Nevada just uh, beat USC today, so they're going to be, uh, you know, coming in undefeated. Texas uh, took a, a tough home loss uh, just the other night, so you know they're going to be on point. Uh, Northern Iowa is always tough at home. Uh, that's going to be an unbelievable game. Have Mississippi Valley State here, and then we go to uh, San Diego which is a very, very good team. Uh, they're playing extremely well. So that's going to be a, a really tough sketch, a str a stretch for us. And hopefully we just continue to, uh, to play hard and, and continue to get better. What are you expecting from Boise State here tonight? They lost three starters. Uh, Hutchinson, their leading scorer, of course, a, a season ago. He went to two overtimes up at Boise State a year ago in this home and home. Uh, what are you seeing from them Very tonight? talented group. You know, their record may not show it, but uh, they're a very, very good team. Offensively, they can score with anybody uh, at all five positions. Uh, their starters all can score, uh, led by Jessup, who's a, a, a terrific uh, point guard. They got a point guard that comes off the bench. He may start tonight, very talented. Uh, a really good two big men down low. They got a stretch for it, can really shoot it. Uh, a, a junior college kid at the three who's very athletic, can play the four, puts it on the floor. So this is going to be a tough game. They're a, uh, they're a very, very talented team. They play a lot of zone. They play man, so they'll mix it up against us. Um, this is going to be a good test for us. How have you managed? I mean, you talked about 10 deep on the bench. Have you been able to, do you feel comfortable with how your Well, I've cut going? it down to nine right now because, you know, Rob hasn't played the last couple games. Not to say he's not going to play. Mm -hmm. Rob is a talented kid. 
Uh, he's just got to find his way back into the lineup, and when uh, when his name get called, he's got to find a way to produce for us. And I haven't given up on on him at all. But uh, as the season goes along, uh, minutes are going to increase. I think the leading minute getter right now is Michael Finke at like 25 minutes a game. So uh, we're just trying to find a nice rotation, and you know, all nine, all ten guys can play. We just got to find a rotation that works. And that second group comes in and does a very good job of kind of speeding up the game defensively with our switching defense, and that's been a good boost for us, especially against LaSalle. They came and really changed the game there. So I'm comfortable with what we're doing right now. All right, well, good luck tonight. Thank you. All right, Head Coach Dan Marley, our guest here with us. More of the Lopes pregame show continues from GCU Arena on this whiteout evening. One of the basketball team's goals is to be a top 25 program at GCU. Appearances in the Wooden Legacy and the Colangelo Classic are ways they are making strides in this direction. Kate will talk to GCU President Brian Mueller about this when the Lopes pregame show continues after this timeout. A local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. You use the latest technology to treat patients, but your care and compassion is timeless. Advancing your career means helping more patients and providing even more care. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back inside GCU Arena where it is a whiteout tonight as the Lopes welcome in Boise State. And we want to remind you if you're not able to be here and be part of the action, grab a white t-shirt, sit on your couch, grab a, what if you need, your phone, your computer, find us on Instagram and Twitter using the hashtag LopesUp and you can still be a part of the party out here tonight. And you can see the tweets right now rolling on the bottom of the screen. That tweet could be yours throughout our broadcast. Hashtag looks up. Kate Longworth here with the Lopes Free Game Show. Thank you so much for joining us on this exciting night as we welcome back the Lopes from the Wood and Legacy Classic. And we also welcome in GCU President Brian Mueller, who was also on the road for his Thanksgiving. And as you return from California after that big tournament, what was it like for GCU to be involved in that big tournament play over a major holiday? It was an absolutely great weekend. You know, uh, we played a Big E school, we played a Pac-12 school, played Seton Hall to start with. We were ahead with 38 seconds to go. Call didn't go our way, and we ended up losing, but Seton Hall won the tournament. So we were right there and close to winning that tournament. Won our last game against the, uh, against the Sal, but really the big story was the support for the Lopes. Uh, we dominated the arena. We got our band, our cheerleaders, our dance team, uh, huge attendance from uh, Grand Canyon, and uh, it was just a great community experience for the university. Yeah, one of the unique things about the university is we know what kind of home court advantage the Havocs can bring inside this arena. But as you referenced, you guys had such a great support system on the road. And you will in some of these future upcoming games, whether it's San Diego or Texas. Take me through what the Lopes on the Road program is all about and how it helps the basketball program. Well, you know, we've got 95,000 students at Grand Canyon, 21,000 on our campus and 75,000 online. Uh, we have 145,000 uh, alumni uh, growing by 1,500 a month. And so when we go to a place like Seattle or Las Vegas or whatever, uh, we invite the entire Lope Nation to come out. And we, have a, we have a big tailgate. We have an appearance by Coach Marley. The, they get to, uh, people get to know the players. And uh, it's just a great experience. In many cases, we outdraw the home crowd, uh, which is uh, tremendous. Uh, the Lope Nation is growing nationally, and organizing it around a basketball game is a great way to build community. Yeah, and the college basketball fans are going to be treated to an early holiday gift when next weekend the Colangelo Classic will be here. Some top-tier programs featured at Talking Stick Arena, and we'll see GCU go up against number five, Nevada. How did the Colangelo Classic come about for this school? Well, well uh, Mr. Colangelo was a big part of it, uh, obviously. Uh, they were 
looking to put college tournaments together at neutral sites because nobody wants to play on somebody else's home court. Uh, this was a logical location to do it. And having Jerry's name behind it, having the Hall of Fame involved, there, we got a lot of power behind it. This year, it worked out unbelievably. Yeah. Uh, if for anybody out there that's a college basketball fan, it's probably the biggest tournament in the country uh, before Christmas. Uh, Tennessee is going to open up against Gonzaga, so that's two top six teams. And then we play Nevada in the, in the nightcap, and they're the fifth-ranked team in the country. And so if you are a college basketball fan, that day is going to be an absolute extravaganza. There are still tickets available. I'd, I'd highly advise you to, to look into it. It's going to be a great event. Yeah, I mean, this is if you can't wait till March, like most basketball fans cannot wait till the madness. Right here, you get your little taste of it. And for GCU, why is it so important to be involved in tournaments like this against competition of this caliber? Well, our, our, our players need the confidence of playing against this level of competition. And, and I, I know we didn't win those first two games, but Seton Hall is a really good team. Yeah. They lost by two to Louisville today. And, uh, and so we were right there with them. I mean, we had them beat. A couple things didn't go our way in the last 30 seconds. Otherwise, we were right there. We played Utah real strong. They're going to be a good Pac-12 school. Uh, and then we won our last game. And so our players are starting to get understand that we have now the level of talent that we compete at the highest levels. Um, before Christmas, we're still going to play Texas, who's a nationally ranked team. We're going to play Nevada, who's ranked fifth. San Diego's a very good school this year. We're going to play them just after Christmas. And so we're really hoping that, that the confidence builds with our guys. They understand they can play at this level, and that will get us ready for our conference. And I think what's so impressive um, about Dan Marley and really the coaches you have throughout the athletic programs here at GCU is the fact that, yes, you're just second year into transition in Division I, um, athletics and competition, but the sixth year of Division One play, and really from day one, you never shied away from competition across the board. How has that fueled the success of the athletic program? Because you're already seeing championships, whether it's track, soccer, uh, you know, swimming. How do you feel like the programs have started building from day one? Well, we're, we're beyond excited about it. You know, we, we set a goal that we want all of our programs to be top 25 programs. And that sounds very ambitious. I know that. But we're, we're there already. Our, our swimming team is ranked 16th in the country. Our track and field team is winning the conference championship every year. Our baseball team has won conference championships already, and they've got a nationally recognized schedule this year and have beat out some big schools for uh, for some pitching talent. And so uh, it sounds ambitious, but we've got a destination city, a destination state. We were ranked the seventh best college campus in the country. Kids want to be here. And, and, and so the recruiting keeps uh, ratcheting up, and uh, we're going to get there. Yeah. I think you guys are already there. Thank you so much, Brian Mueller, for joining us. Always great to get your insight on GCU. And like President Mueller said, the groundwork has been laid here at GCU. You can see in this whiteout, the Havocs, they are ready to go. And there's so much to talk about when you talk about GCU athletics. So who better to get the inside information than our Lopes Insider? Right after the break, we bring in Paul Coro for all the information and much, much more. Don't go anywhere. Our armed forces' heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service. Well, do you call it a purple pregame party on a whiteout night? I don't know. Send in your tweets and uh, find us on Instagram using that hashtag loops up and let us know what you're calling it. It is the purple pregame party. Whiteout night here at GCU Arena. You don't need to adjust your television screen. This is the Lopes pregame show. I'm Kate Longworth. He's the Lopes insider, Paul Cora. 
And he joins us now after having his turkey dinner on the road in Southern California, following the basketball team at the Wooden Legacy Classic Tournament last weekend. And what were your takeaways watching the Wolves compete in that? Well, first off, it's great for them to play those type of teams. You see Seton Hall go on to win the tournament. Today, they almost beat Louisville. They just, they ran into a buzzsaw, Miles Powell. He hasn't shot like that again since then. And that's basically what beat them that night when they lost uh, just after leading with 106 to go. And then they play Utah. That's the team that's doing well. Won again today. Even LaSalle, the team they beat at the end of the tournament, they were beating number 24 Villanova right. by 12 in the first half today. So it's just that level of competition for them to see raises. I mean, this whole month's schedule is going to be like that. And you yeah. stepped up your game as well. You did a little of the pop broadcasting for the radio. What was that like, that yeah. experience I'm for no you? Scott Williams or anything, but he was <laughs> texting me encouragement. Thanks for that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just try to stay out of Michael Potter's way, but that was a lot of fun uh, to share that. They do a great job, Michael Potter and Tom Kuyper here on 1580, and so we got a great media team here. You too. Oh, well, thank you very much. I wasn't fishing for a compliment, I swear, but you were great on it, and I think it's because you know this Loeb team inside and out. You're out in the practices. You are on the road with them, and you file such great pieces about why they're succeeding on the court, but also some great human interest, like you did about the Peaky Brothers most recently. What have you learned about this family? And from what I gather, we're going to see one more Pinky coming this way. Yeah, that's really neat. Their younger daughter, Ashley, is, came here for Midnight Madness and she was so moved by the experience. She didn't even come with family or anything. She did her own trip by herself and decided that she wanted to be here. So, so Tim Pinky will always have a sibling here. Michael this year and right. Ashley from now on. The Pinkies are a great family. Uh, their dad coached them on a lot of teams as they grew up. And, Michael kind of set the example for the three brothers. They have the brother Nick that plays at Army. For them to be such a tight knit group, and yeah. each one found their own way here. You never would have thought it would happen with kids that are four years apart in school, but the, right. now they get this special experience to do it for a whole season. And now as starters, because Tim's earned that. Right, the Finkies truly uh, helping the success right now. We're seeing with the basketball team, and really quick to switch gears, let's dive into swimming and how they have been doing really well. What have you seen? Yeah, well, it's Mark Nikolaev again. We talked about him last year. He's He's got the top time in the nation, and it's, it really goes beyond that. There was a story on GC Lopes that kind of details how it's a historic time. We're the, possibly the fastest ever in NCAA history for before January. And because of him, they, they, they can maybe qualify some relays again for NCAA, and they're number 16 in the nation. Really great accomplishment by Steve Schaefer and his staff. Yeah, and Paul, we could talk GCU athletics all night long, but I have a feeling folks also want to going to happen behind us. That, of course, means the Lopes in action basketball tonight. But you don't have to end your time with Paul Coro. You can visit all his work on GCULopes.com. But for now, we're going to let you take a trip around the WAC when we come back. Don't worry. We'll provide all the information. You grab the snacks. We'll be right back. Label me. You know you want to. Don't be shy. You do it behind my back. So say it to my face. Hey. You don't know me. You know what I am? I'm a pitcher. I'm a striker. I'm a point guard. I'm a linebacker. I'm a center. Shortstop. High jumper. Wrestler. Defender. Goalie. Student. Student athletes. That's who we are. <laughs> yeah! Do you want to be on Ask GCU? Twitter raffle. Twitter raffle. Tweet us your questions, and the person with the best question is going to get featured on the next episode with the crew. My dudes. What are you doing? <laughs> People don't like us very much, it seems. <laughs> Tweet hashtag AskGCU to get your question featured. We're moments away from tip-off here at GCU Arena, but real quick, we take a look on their action throughout the WAC Conference. And just before we know it, WAC Conference play will be here. And right now, this is how things are shaping up in the preseason. Kansas City getting the second win on the season over Purdue at Fort Wayne. Chicago State also getting their second victory on the season. 80-72, a final at home as they beat Eastern Illinois. UT Rio Grande Valley, UTRGB with the with the victory there over UT Arlington, 76-65.
and CSU Bakersfield made that hard trip over to South Dakota and could not come up with the win. 68-56, a final there. Some top matchups in action tonight. We'll be following them uh, throughout this weekend, and we'll also be following the game. We know you've got locked in on your screen here on your view. That is, of course, GCU Lopes back home after the Wooded Legacy Tournament, and it is a whiteout. The crowd here, the Havocs, after their turkey dinner, they're out in full force as the Broncos of Boise State take the court and the GCU Lopes look to defend. Scott and Barry will be right back after this with the call. every week and the points don't matter wait what tune in every week for answers to be questioned where we answer your questions in a common pro in a, all right. professional manner. <laughs> tweet hashtag ask to see you to get your question featured From the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University and inside GCU Arena where tonight the Lopes return home to a whiteout to host the Boise State Broncos. Good evening and welcome to GCU Basketball. Alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams, I'm Barry Butel. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. While well, the Lopes return home after traveling to Anaheim, California, Cal State Fullerton area for the Wooden Legacy Classic. Tough games against Seton Hall and Utah, but they close it up with a big victory over LaSalle. Yeah, they really lit that scoreboard up. 82 points, they went inside for 38 points, and the bench was phenomenal with 43 big ones. 82-70, the final score. Damari Milstead, 23 minutes, 17 points coming off the bench. How about a guy that gets the start? The big man, Alessandro Labor, had the double-double. Yeah, the Italian Stallion had it rolling from outside and in. He's doing a really nice job spacing the floor for the Lopes. And I love the way he's playing with his back to the basket, using a lot of strength around the goal. 31 minutes, 17 points, 10 rebounds for Alessandro Labor. The Boise State Broncos coming in with a record of two and four, coming off six straight 20-plus win seasons. Yeah, they got a big guy inside. Williams absolutely phenomenal. His 15 points and set over seven and a half boards a night. He had 27 and a loss at Creighton. The junior guard, their leading scorer and rebounder. We'll look at R.J. Williams and this two and four Broncos team coming in in the back half of a home and home series against the Lopes. Time to get it started. Let's send it down to their public address announcer, Paul Denuser, with our prayer and our national anthem. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the beautiful GCU Arena for a GCU Whiteout. And tonight's men's basketball matchup between the Broncos of Boise State University and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you to please take a moment of silence in honor of the life 
of the late 41st President George H.W. Bush. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with the word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Ryan Salerno, a sophomore majoring in sports management here at GCU. Please pray with me. Dear God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for bringing us all here safely. We pray that the players and coaches and everyone here will have a good time and that they'll all play to the best of your glory. Uh, we thank you for bringing us all here safely and that uh, everyone will uh, travel home safely as well and that uh, we, uh, we lift up this season to you and that uh, we'll remember the real season for you, which is you. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Ryan. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the singing of the national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by the Westview High School Choir under the direction of GCU alum, Lori Dixon. Thank you, Westview High School and alumnus, Lori Dixon. And Ryan Salerno with our prayer, tremendous job. A packed house here at GCU Arena as Boise State comes to town, a record of two and four. Lost Tuesday night to Drake, 83-74. Their head coach is Leon Rice, he's in his ninth season. He's taking the Broncos to five postseason tournaments, including two at-large bids to the NCAA tournament. Here are his Coach Rice's starting five, brought to you by Dignity Health. Dignity Health, hello, human kindness. Marcus Dickens, Dickinson, Justinian Jessup, R.J. Williams, Pat Dembley, and Zach Haney. Yeah, we're going to look at Jessup because he likes to get him up. He's a three-point bomber, second most threes in Boise State history a year ago, and he's also a 90% free throw shooter. Assistant coaches Chris Hacker, Mike Burns, and Tim Durier. Ninth season for head coach Rice. At Boise State. And won 20 or more games seven times. Time now to introduce you to GCU. Look for Austin Frayer to attack the basket tonight. 
Dan Marley in his sixth season as head coach. The Lopes 4 and 3 after beating LaSalle 82 70 on Sunday night. The associate head coach is Lewis Wilson. The assistant coaches are Chris Crevelone and TJ Benson. Director of basketball operations is Jesse Parker. Special assistant to the head coach, Johnny Hill. Video coordinator is Matt Lopez. And the graduate assistant is Dylan Hill Dogo. Remember, fans, Sunday night, Talking Stick Arena, Sunday afternoon, rather, 3.30 tip against Nevada. First, it's the Broncos. Isaiah Brown in the center circle. Uh, take a look at our Sanderson Ford keys to the game. The best play in a new forward is at Sanderson Ford. Scott? Yeah, break the Broncos. Look to score in the paint tonight. You gotta go strong with your post-ups. Hard drives to the basket and get on that old board. Get some buckets inside that painted area. And Cowboy up. I mean, get up on somebody and play pressure defense. You gotta create turnovers. You gotta get steals that will lead to easy buckets. And it built Sanderson Ford tough. When you play a team as strong as Boise State, Nevada, uh, Texas. You've got to be mentally strong at all times. You've got to be F-150 tough. What are you talking about? F-150 is a bad boy. That's what the Lopes need tonight. I mean, there's going to be periods in time when they go into a little mini uh, slump or maybe Boise State just gets some good buckets. They go on a little bit of a run. You can't splinter, you gotta stay together. Look at the whiteout. Casey McClellan, Gregory Nixon, and Marcus Pettigrew are your officials tonight at GCU Arena. Alex got this whole section up here wow. just bouncing up and down. They are ready to rock and roll. Lopes fans will remain on their feet until the Lopes hit the opening bucket here for the first and second halves. Zach Haney, Oscar Freyer. And we are underway in Phoenix. Rexel takes possession for the Lopes. Picked off, quick steal here for Boise State in the early bucket. That's a lazy pass across the perimeter by Finky. He's got to be stronger with that basketball. You can't give Boise State an easy opportunity to get out to a quick leap. R.J. Williams with the first bucket. Drexel stops, pops, short, rebound. Pulled down by Michael Finky. Turning, twisting, back out. Labor, bounce pass back to Michael Finke, turning, firing, good! What fans can take a seat. Well, that's how you make up for a mistake. You get yourself an old board, you get good position down there in that low posted area, and take the top off the defense with the jump. Work the perimeter, Freyer put a hand on it. Back into the hands of Dembley, starting for Alston. Hand off by Haney. In the corner, looking for three. Good. You know, they got a little bit lax with the ball, but it got themselves back under control. A little penetration pitch to the corner leads to an open three-point look. Nemley for Boise State. Up by three. Drexel moves left. Back to Labor. Labor's going to hand it off. Finky to his older brother, Michael. Oh, off the rim, Crayer too far. Here come the Broncos. Pass near side. Jessup in and out. Rebound pulled down by the Broncos. Underneath. Nowhere to go but finding some space. Page out of the Lopes book that time. Getting on that offensive glass. He got himself under the basket, but he didn't panic. He took his time. Went up strong. Hey, got that bucket. Five point Broncos lead. Pinky pulls down in the paint, back edging his way, baseline, back out front, turns it, puts it over! Oh, more active Pinky now, being aggressive offensively. Back 
back out. Tom Jessel. Turns back, near side, down in front now. Low, turning, big right hand. Rebound pulled down by the Broncos. Wolves need to do a better job underneath. Back out, fresh 30. Yeah, they gotta do a better job of putting the body on the bottom. Dickinson drains it. Give a team three opportunities to score, they're gonna knock it in. Coach Barley can't be happy with the start on the defensive end right now. Waver hands it back over. Drexel. Drexel. Back to Alessandro. Leaves it for Freyer. Freyer comes near side, hands it back over to Drexel. Far side, thinking. Inside, ooh, just over the top. Labor loses it, and the Broncos. Big man putting it on the floor. In the corner, long range, shot Demley, short. Nobody there but Drexel. Tim Figgy, moves quick, underneath. Careful, he's out. I think they got wow. a push. Yeah. yeah. Push him out. Hip check in the back there. Push him out. Look at Tinky here. I love this one right here. Keeps a live dribble. Keeps working the big man. Makes him test those feet out. And realizes he's got the speed to get down to the other end. But look at it. Doesn't box out. Labor got caught ball watching. Didn't put a body on a body. And they give up the old board, which led to a buck. Ball goes up by five. Inbound. Finky, 26 on the shot clock. Back out. Michael Finky's got it. Grab it. Labor takes, ooh, got a hand on it. Almost a steal there by R.J. Williams. He's got to wake up. Vicky in the corner, Freyer, Freyer. Beyond the arc, looks for three. Good set! I think they called that a two. Two right is on the line. Inside, tough one. Backing it on Labor. That's double dribble. Yes, indeed. Call it traveling, but can't put the ball on the floor, pick it up, and then put it down again. Look at this one here by Oscar Ferrari. There was no hesitation. He has been playing subpar, and he wants to get off to a fast start here offensively. One dribble pull up, knocks it down. You mentioned that just 3.7 points per game in his last three games. Labor backing up. In the paint. Step back. Heavy rebound. Michael Finky. Oh, it came up for a little time. A nice job. See, that was on Boise State. Putting her body on him. You realize there was a height disadvantage, but you put your body on him, even though he's coming over the top. He keeps boxing out. You get the call. 9 6, the early score. 15 47. First timeout. Send it down. Court side. Kate Longworth. All right. Thank you, guys. I'm joined now by head of the men's women's track team, Tom Flood, head coach, and thank you so much, Tom, for being here with us, and you're coming off successful season once again. Let me just read some of these applications. You guys have four WAC championships, 14 NCAA preliminary qualifiers, three NCAA outdoor titles. You guys, it seems like a redundant record. However, this is incredible. What is fueling your success? Yeah, we, we couldn't have had a better year last year. Uh, uh, the first year of uh, being eligible for the NCAA, um, getting one to the indoor championship and three to the outdoor championships. Um, swept uh, both indoor and outdoor uh, WAC conference titles and uh, took 14 athletes to the regionals. It was just a phenomenal year. And of course, the goal is to continue these athletes into the indoor season. First and foremost, how do you prepare for the indoor season? Um, we're, we're very fortunate. We can train outside all year, so uh, the weather is such a benefit. Uh, not really much different. It's uh, There's only 15 events. Um, Depth isn't such a problem indoor, but uh, uh, playing Boise State, Boise State's indoor track has been very nice to us. We've swept the last three indoor titles, both men and women's there, so hopefully our basketball team's not gonna be as hospitable today, so. And as you take a look at this schedule and just about your team and the makeup of it, who should we be watching for? Oh God, it's just so tough. We're so loaded on the guys' side with a lot of depth. Uh, it's really nice to have Trey Johnson back this year, um, able to compete. Um, uh, Alexa Hokison looked really good. Jesse Newman again outdoor with finished ninth at the NCAAs. There's just a host of athletes. Sarah Root, um, Shanice Lewis. There's some really tough seniors. Uh, um, it's always a total team effort. What's been the key to your recruiting success? I just think hardworking kids. The university is very uh, athletic minded, uh, very supportive, and just kids that want to work hard and get better. And uh, winning sure doesn't get old around here. 
That is very true. And guys, I'm just going to say it for Coach Flood because I think he's a little too modest. I think the coaching at the top is where it all starts. That is. I don't know about that. So I got great assistance. So. <laughs> that is true. All right, let's go back up to Barry and Scott. Coach Flood, well known, and his staff, well known, uh, bringing in quality recruits year in and year out. And yeah, they have done really well in Nampa, Idaho, in the last few years. So thank you to the state of Idaho for bringing the Lopes track team some success. Yeah, he kind of trolled boys. He stayed a little bit there, didn't he? It's kind of funny, a coach boys there. I like. I was. I coached up in up in Boise. It was uh, for the Idaho Stampede. There you go. Let's go back and look at this one here by Oscar Frere. You can see that right toe oh. just gets on, touching that line, and referees were right on top. They called it a two right away. But I love the aggressiveness there. Though. That oh. one dribble pull. -up. Do we have some controversy here, though? That was a very great replay that we used, Tom. Wow, that right foot, I don't know. The other angle. Hmm. Interesting. That second look we saw, it looked like it was behind the line. It is a three. Thank goodness for the excellent staff and crew here. Yeah, good camera work, you know guys. What I mean? got, the, got the lopes of extra the lopes point. Of point. <laughs> State fans are like, yeah, yeah congratulations, crew. That's right. <laughs> they never miss a, any shot. Six years and counting, no pressure. Oscar Freire out of a little full court pressure here on the ball. Defense, I like it. Hands it off. Dickinson. With Jessup, away from the play. The Tim Finke. I think the guy Drexel, Drexel down there trying to fight off the screen away from the ball. It seemed to me he got a hip check, which caused him to run into his guy. <laughs> he got whistled for the foul. Always hated when that happened. Alston in the game. Dickinson. Jesse. Near side corner. Goes around Drexel. There's a back out. Off the rim. Pulled down by Trail. Austin with the miss. That's how you go up and snatch a board. You're at a 5 2 disadvantage until Fred grabbed that one. Michael to Tim Finky. Oh, loses the handle. Broncos ball went off of Tim Finky's leg. I like the idea of going back door against overplay pressure like that, but you got to be secure with the basketball. Too many turnovers here in the first five minutes. Three turnovers. David Wacker in the game for the Broncos. Dembley, Dembley with some room. A little floater off the glass. In and out. Charge. Right in the, yeah, Jackson giving up his body for his mates down low. That up from Jared Martin. Indeed. Martin always down there. Gets outside that restricted area. And well, that's one of those ones he got the ball off. The basket would have counted had it gone in, but the contact play, uh, uh, occurred after the bucket still uh, charged for uh, Drexel. Broncos tried to shut down Drexel. He got it to Freyer, gives Tim Finke. Drexel quickly. Michael Finke turns beyond the arc to the right. Freyer is beyond the arc. Heavy rebound. Pulled down by the Broncos. Here they come. Dickinson, your side, comes back in. Off of the glass and in. That's too easy. And that's knifing right down the middle of the defense. Someone's got to step in there and provide more resistance. Four point Boise State lead. These teams went to double overtime a season ago before the Broncos won at 85 80. Losing three starters, including a first round draft pick of the Chicago Bulls. Long range, rebound. Pulled down by the Rock Hills. They outnumbered Michael Finke. Wide pass. Drexel got a hand on it. Good block job there by Drexel getting back in defensive rotation there. He saw there was a man cutting to the basket and got in front of that passing lane. Amari Milstead in the game. Jessup, 
Jessup. I by Freya. Jessup trying to move, pulls back, nowhere to go. Alston. Near side, Dickinson. Bounce pass, back into Wacker. Beyond the arm, pulled down, twisting, turning, left hand underneath, nobody home, and easy put back. They're getting that Alston. penetration below the free throw line and into the painted area. Puts way too much on the defense to try to protect that close to the basket. Guys can't communicate quickly enough to recover. Left the man wide open underneath. 8-2 margin for the Broncos in the paint. Drexel. Bounce pass. Michael turns. Fires! Vicky with another bucket off of that right block area. Seems to be a go-to area for him. Martin and Carlos Johnson at the scorer's table waiting to come in. Jessup. Trying to move. Labor came up to support Freyer. All the way over into the corner for Dickinson. Milstead eyeing him. Eight on the shot clock. Seven. Kick back out. Pulled down. Driving. Williams. Jackson got to the position he wanted on the floor, but instead of going to the ground and, and exaggerating the contact, well, he let him play on. Matt Jackson joining the crew at the scorer's table. Labor off the mark. Rebound easily pulled down by the Broncos. Jessup. Good. Look out. He's lethal from the arc. 16 of 39 coming in. Coach Marley needed a timeout. His team was struggling to get any kind of stops on this Boise team. They were in a good flowing rhythm. That three in transition was enough for him to pull the trigger on a timeout. Top on the floor. The Broncos on top 18 and 9. They're four of their last four from the floor. We'll be back in Phoenix after we take this timeout. It's that time again. Time to be thankful. Time to be with loved ones. Family Christmas and family traditions. Now's the time to make room for what's really important. The years go by fast and the holidays even faster. This is your season. Seize it. GCU's online degree program puts you first so you can make the most of your time. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Our armed forces heroism, courage, and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors you and pays tribute to you and your family. As a community, GCU celebrates your service, your sacrifice, and your commitment. God bless all the brave men and women who put our country first. We want to do the same for you. GCU puts you first with its flexible and convenient online degree programs. We salute you and thank you for your service. Tonight's GCU men's basketball game is brought to you in part by Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness. And by Sanderson Ford. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. Very detail, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth, GCU Arena. The Broncos are on top 18 to 9. Let's send it down to Kate. Well, guys, talk about logging miles for uh, some holiday travel, some frequent flyer miles. That's exactly what the Broncos have been doing as they have traveled over 9,000 miles. They have been in the Cayman Islands since the 16th of November. They kind of zigzag across the United States. Now they find themselves here in Arizona. And I mean, hey, you've got to build up that travel mileage. Maybe they can go somewhere cool for the holidays. Well, probably not. They'll probably actually continue to play basketball. But Scott, I reflect this back to you. And I just think for a team, when you see them out on the road, the camaraderie it can build for a team. What do you see when a team is out on the road? Because we're going to see that with the Lopes coming up this month as well. Oh, yeah, you, you start to bond. Uh, you, you got a lot of time on the hotel, around the pool area, depending on where you're at, uh, on the buses, on the plane, getting to know more about guys personally than about just their basketball games. And that's how a team starts to grow. Carlos Johnson slashes in, doesn't drop. Uh, Carlos Johnson has been doing such a good job off of the bench, getting inside that painted area. Only Michael Finke and Oscar Freyer have scored for the Lopes while the Broncos has six different scores. Swarm there, Martin and Milstead. Loose ball picked up by the Broncos near side. Cutting in Dembley. Loose ball pulled down by Carlos Johnson. 
Jared Martin. Drexel quickly in the corner from Milstead beyond the arc. Comes back out front off the wing. Cuts in. Drexel goes down a long three. Has a little bit of room at the top of the key. Go! Very nice job showing the pump fake. Couple dribbles gets to the spot on the floor. That elbow seems to be an error he likes to try to uh, get to on the floor. Shoot his jump shot. Hands it off. Dickinson. Back out. Now down low. Turning. Muscling his way. It looks like a travel. A travel, yeah. Shuffle those pivot foot. Nice job by Carlos Johnson after. Now Dickinson caught that ball, bodying up on him. But you can't let a guy curl eight feet in front of the basket right there and catch a, catch a pass. If you do that too many times, you're going to get burned. Drexel, near side. Matt Jackson leaves it there for Carlos Johnson. Foul call. I like that one. Carlos Johnson coming out of that wing. Curl to the basket with his strength and speed. There's not going to be too many players that can stay with him. Jackson back out. Jackson. Martin. Drexel. Drexel. Leaves it for Matt Jackson. Trey comes back out. Moves left. Seven on the shot clock. Johnson. Drexel. Four, three, got to get a shot off. Looks for a long three. Short. Rebound. Loose. Picked up by Milstead. Good work by Martin. Driving. Hoop it up. Hard. Milstead. Well, nice job not giving up on that rebound. Somehow they were able to poke it loose there. When he got in the hands of Milstead, he's been one of these guys like Johnson off the bench that have just been in attack mode going to the bucket. And you can see players sliding to his right, trying to anticipate where. Uh, Milstead was going to be, but got to get those feet set. Broncos lead is five. Milstead's doing a really nice job, an 80% shooter from the free throw line. He's been instant offense when he's come off that bench. I think, you know, he was probably tabbed to be the starting point guard and in the after the exhibition and Trey Dressel played so well, he went to that bench and did not hang his head at all. He has been a force. Williams leaves it there for Haney. In the corner it goes. Williams pulls down, dishes to his left. Jessup. Twisting, turning. Five on the shot clock. Martin comes out. Where's he going to go? Near side. One on the shot clock. They, they did, did not off. get it on. Now, you know, that's Dude. a good timeout by Coach Marlin. He was at 18 9 disadvantage, and their defense is picked up, and they're getting some scrappy looks on the offense, and then the guy's going hard to the rack. These guys come off the bench and provide that spark, that defensive spark. Here it is one more time, trying to get that shot up, but zero's on the, score, uh, the shot clock. Drexel stops, pops! Well, now the Lopes are taking a page out of what Boise State was doing earlier. Everything coming from below the free throw line. Nice 7-0 mini spurt. Dickinson kicks back out. Williams, Jessup. Just inside the arc, too heavy. Rebound underneath Haney. Put back. Mm. He just went and beasted him down low that time. Got a bucket they really needed on the offensive glass. Wolves run a 7 0 run. Look out. Sloppy, sloppy. Williams. Now Williams does a nice job overplaying that high pass from side to side. It just got to be better with the basketball. Oh, the backbreaker. You got a lot of momentum going. You do something like that, and then all of a sudden it feels like they quiet. they quieted the, this GCU crowd that was ready to take the top off this building. Rio and steals. Milstead for three. Good for Damari Milstead. Now, Milstead and Johnson, Martin, those guys have come in here, picked it up on both the defense and the offense event. Crowd starting to rally the team. A whiteout, build the capacity crowd here in Phoenix. Stopping, popping, Jessup, short, rebound, Johnson. Give, give Matt Jackson a lot of credit. Big fella going out there and playing a smaller player, forced him into a tough shot. Now, 
Looks like foul committed on Jackson. Yeah, Williams loves getting out in that uh, high area there, using his length, getting that basketball and taking off to the other end. And then I like that because they didn't hang their head after the mistake. They came back and found a hot ball player in the corner for an easy corner three. Milstead leaves it for Drexel. Drexel here is right. Takes it back from Carlos. Five and stopping just inside the arc and good. Great Drexel. Well, Drexel left a right hand and likes to dribble left with pull up jump. Four of their last four after a 7 0 run on the Lopes here. Kicking it into gear after falling 18 9. Picked off. First deal for the Lopes. Milstead stop. Oh, he got it picked away by Jessen. Timeout on the floor. 22 21. As the Lopes bench has responded here. As uh, 7.33 to go on the clock, opening half. The Finky brothers have been heard from here tonight. Well, how about Michael and Tim Finky stepping it up here for the Lopes? Well, I, I like Michael Finky. He made an early mistake that started the basketball game off, but he's a senior veteran, didn't, didn't worry about that. Kept playing hard, and he comes right back here off of this block. He gets a nice turnaround jump shot, and then another one gets to his sweet spot on the floor. I love that. Keeps the big fella's feet moving, and goes all the way around. And then I love this one right here, because when you've seen that ball go through the basket a couple times, all of a sudden it becomes as big as a hula hoop, easy to throw in the third field goal. Thank you, three of four, six points in the game. Fans, be sure to get out and support the Lopes next. Saturday, December 9th. Saturday or Sunday? It might be Sunday, December 9th at 3.30 when they take on the fifth-ranked Nevada Wolfpack as part of the Jerry Colangelo Classic. The Pack are coming off a Sweet 16 appearance last season. They're led by their head coach, Eric Musselman, Twins Caleb and Cody Martin. Number one-ranked Gonzaga will take on number six-ranked Tennessee at 1 p.m. Phoenix will definitely be the center of college basketball on Sunday. Great tickets still available. Guy going to GC Lopes dot com slash events or by contacting the GCU sales ticket office at 602-639-8979. There he is, Jerry Colangelo in the house. As he is most nights. The Jerry Colangelo Classic, bringing college basketball's elite to Talking Stick Arena. Another venue Jerry Colangelo is definitely aware of, well aware of. Man, there's some great basketball all week. From tomorrow. Zaga got a little scared today. Right? Creighton gave, gave, gave him a little scared, but they opened all it up. They late. wanted, yeah. And then they were able to hold on and keep their. Oh, my uh, goodness. That was Santa, I think. This is a win. <laughs> yeah. Don't you love December? <laughs> December 22nd, Ugly's Twitter night. We look forward to seeing you out here. Already got mine picked out. Uh, Underway, we got a game. It's Lopes storming back here underneath. Christine, not there. Lopes, move it up with a chance to take the lead. Milstead taking charge off the bench. Out there with Drexel. They've been working well, and also Carlos Johnson. Matt Jackson. Morton. Drexel for three. That's good. The Lopes are in the lead. Well, I'll tell you what, Drexel's found his range out there. He's four of six from the field right now. <laughs> Give him nine points. 8-0, Lopes run. In the corner, Williams. Drexel call. I like this one here. Martin was directing traffic. He told one of the players to cut through, and then he wanted a little two-man game with Drexel, a nice little DHO, a dribble handoff. It's enough to give Drexel a space he needed to put it in the basket, and he could have get himself a little blow. The second personal foul. He's going to take a seat. Freyer comes back. Ooh, almost picked off by Jackson. Jessen inside. Turning Williams. Oh, Martin got a hand on it.
Milstead in the paint, back out. I think they got a foul underneath as Damari Milstead was going to the basket before he passed that ball off. Someone got in his way and we call a block. So that's the 16 foul on the Boise State. And GCU will have their ball out underneath their own basket where they're so good on their baseline out of bounds plays. I would like to bet there's a better chance than not that they're going to score here. Malik Carwell, Freyer. There you go. Just as Scott Williams predicted. That's a nice job by Carlos Freire. He just comes off a couple screens, an easy shot right along the baseline. Boise State needs a timeout, takes a timeout. 17-4 run for GCU. They lead it by four. Matt Jackson with a nice screen there. Does a good job, doesn't actually get a piece of the player, but look how far he's got a fear around the large body of Jackson. Easy bucket for Freire. He's come to play tonight. There's a Utah State connection here, as you see Lewis Wilson, the associate head coach. The assistant, Tim Durier, was picked up by Boise State after the Utah State staff was relieved of their duties after the conclusion of last season. Durier joins Coach Rice at Boise State. Lewis Wilson takes the position left open by Todd Lee after uh, Craig Smith took the head coaching job at Utah State. So it's a small world. It's all about Just networking and who you know. Turning these coaches over. A different feeling in the game now for Lopes fans. Williams trying to turn on Martin and does. Nice play call off the bench there. It's a to your best player, get him isolated down on the block, let him use his athleticism, and he jumped right up over the top of Jared Martin. Milstead, Johnson, back to DeMarne, looks for three, heavy. Freyer with the rebound underneath, putting it out the window. How did he hang so long? That ball was so high in the air, he was able to hang long enough that nobody came down to challenge him on that right side of the glass. And those pogo-like legs was up back in the air after he came down so quickly, no one could stop him. Seven for Freya. Oh, the illegal oh, screen oh, underneath oh, on Martin. Number three, Justine Martin just plays so hard defensively. Sometimes he picks up a, you know, either a turnover or draws a charge. Yeah. There's Mrs. Martin right there. She gave you some treats. Yes, she did. I, a treat I've never heard of. It's called Tim Tam. Oh, yeah. Original. Break that it's got open. some chocolate, uh, it's like sandwich with a chocolate cream filling. Turn around! <laughs> Matt Jackson! Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, he right puts the Tam Dam now. We've got the Aussie all fired up. They're filling it up. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, yeah! Martin! Woo! We kicked his shoe off. He was so excited. <laughs> I don't know if Mama's gonna like that one. She's like, what the heck is he doing out there? that kid out of tie his shoes. Well, I think what happens is when he goes down, it's kind of it's kind of loose, and then he jumps up so quickly, the <laughs> shoe comes right off his foot there. But I'll tell you, this bench bunch has really done the job. She's got the moves, too. Uh, so, yep, we're gonna open up the Tim Tams at Hope at halftime. All you had to say was chocolate, and I'm good to go. It's not good for my diet, but I'm going to have one anyway. This Mark gave to me. 30 24, Lopes on top. Returning from the Wooden Legacy Classic off a victory over LaSalle. They close it out, the Lopes in front of a sold out, white out crowd. We'll be back here December 22nd before Christmas. of a uh, gauntlet of games coming up. All right, I, I'm really surprised Coach Marley probably had a chance to sub a couple of those starters back in, but he left only he left uh, his four bench guys out here with Oscar Freire because they're playing so well right now. Let him roll. Freire! Oh, it doesn't go. Look at him battling after. Did it work? Oh, man, Oscar Freire. That's called hard work, people. 
Yeah, and he, he really did knife hard to the basket. It seemed as though he was going to what? Get the layup, but he didn't get it. Oh, now did they reverse the call? Looked like Flair tossed it behind his back off of one of the Boise State players, but oh, might have hit him so. maybe it was off his own thigh. Again, the video, the uh, TV crew here just too good. Stop it. <laughs> Definitely backs up. I'd right, right, Jackson. He wants three. Good. Jackson did everything right except to have a hand up on that one. Yeah, he didn't want to get driven to the basket by the smaller player, trying to give himself a cushion, but just get a hand up in the shooter's face to distract him. Wolves on a 14-2 run before the bucket. Carlos Johnson too heavy off the window. Four Boise State players underneath the bucket. Dembler. Far side. Leaves for Dickinson. Dickinson. Leaves it there. Harwell back inside. Martin called for the foul. We're going to step aside. 3.38 to go. 30 27 looks ahead of the Broncos. Label me. You know you want to. Don't be shy. You do it behind my back. So say it to my face. Hey, you don't know me. You know what I am? I'm a pitcher. I'm a striker. I'm a point guard. I'm a linebacker. I'm a setter. I'm shortstop. High jumper. Wrestler. Defender. Goalie. Student. Student athletes. That's who we are. GCU. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back on this wide-out evening here at GCU Arena, where it is a close one right now. The Lopes with a three-point lead over the Broncos. And it's a big game right now, and it's one that Trey Drexel, he's just getting used to the transfer out of Western Washington University. Was not exactly used to these high-caliber games against big competition, but after a couple months in the Lopes uniform, it's something he's becoming accustomed to. The craziest thing is when I think about my career is I remember my sophomore year at my last school, we played UW in an exhibition game, and, and that, that was like, the game of the year for us and now it's like we're playing a Pac-12 team we're playing a Big East team and it's like it's regular and, and so getting used to that and getting you know mentally prepared with consistency every night and and for me especially at Division One and you know it, it's just like not taking anything for granted because you know where I come from and kind of my journey it shows that you know hard work and preparation can get you through a lot of things. So. And Trey appeared in 64 games during his Western Washington University career and now the graduate transfer here at GCU. As you said, guys, just really adopting right into Dan Marley's style of basketball and loving the ride and the competition. Having a nice opening half is Trey Drexel. Nine points. Driving hard one. Drains it. After timeouts now, it's been back-to-back -back situations where the Broncos have been able to find the range from behind the arc. 6-0 run for the Broncos. have tied it at 30. Harwell came in just one of five from the arc. Michael Ficke just got his pocket picked by Williams. And that didn't take long, and the Boise State Broncos, just a tick under three minutes, have regained the lead. Uh, you know, they were... Had a six-point lead, and it was generally the time in the game in which the Lopes go on a nice little run and, and take the momentum to the locker room. It, it seems as if Boise State now has fought back, and they've stolen this momentum and silenced this crowd. About to go up by three if he can knock down this free throw. Ten points, three steals. 
for R.J. Williams. Junior guard, Los Angeles, 63% free throw shooter. Could not connect hard off the back iron. Alston checked back in for the Broncos. Milstead comes back left, far side, has a little bit of room. Back to Labor, Labor wants three. That's not gonna go. Look at Oscar Frears down there, working hard on that offensive glass and just pushed under the basket. That's gonna be free throws for the Lopes. Look at, look at just doesn't stop working. See, he gets held there, pushed off the ball and out of the play. That's all because you're out there out working your opponent. Free throw numbers by Oscar Frere, not at all where he wants to be. 58%. Yikes. Quickly, Dickinson. Demble. Took the Lopes a minute to figure out that these guys like the foot fake and pump fake on the perimeter. Now they're staying, staying down in a much better defensive position. Demble. Tied by Johnson, inside. Back out, Dickinson drives. Up high, pulled down by Labor. 30 second violation, wow. another yeah. shot clock violation. Two in the half, nice job by the Lopes. Good defense. Middle step. Watching two minutes to go, opening half. Broncos up by two. Johnson, cuts in. And going, Carlos Johnson. That's where you want to see it. Yeah. Slicing and dicing. And he did a nice job. He worked so hard to get to that painted area, and then he concentrated on the finish. Johnson on the score sheet. Oh, look out, Williams. Williams is just so good, knifing to the basket, using his left hand. By two, Williams with 12. Gilstead, leaving around. Back to Freyer, he wants three. Give it to him! A nice job right there, going one direction, snapping the ball, back in rotation, finding Freyer from behind the arc, his second of the half. Harwell, near side. Alston, down low, back out. Harwell, near side, looking for three. Alston pulled down by Freyer. Confused him with a little zone defense that time. Michael Finke, oh, it's short. Rebound. Labor can't pull it down in time. A quick trigger three there by Finke, who has been able to find the range from the perimeter today, but now you leave. The Broncos with an opportunity. If they want to go quick here, they can go two for one, but it looks like they're going to walk it up. Snow is adjusted. One point, Lopes lead. Dickinson. You see the Lopes play zone defense very often. This is something Coach Wally has put in since their last basketball game. This Wilson has been putting on the heat. The Broncos regain the lead. Yep. Chance for the Lopes to play for the last shot of the half. Well step. Wide by Dickinson. 15, 14. Looking for that last bucket to take the lead. Trailing the Broncos by one. Under nine to go. Milstead, Freyer, bounce pass. Labor. Labor trying to turn to the bucket. Back out. Milstead. Got to get a shot off. That's too short. And the Broncos are going to go in with a one-point lead, 36-35 at the half. Well, teams, both these teams made runs over the course of that half, and Broncos with a slight advantage going to the locker room. 36-35 the score. Dan Marley making his way over to Kate Longworth for a quick chat here before heading over to the, into the dressing room. Kate. All right, thank you very much. Well, Dan, it is a one-point lead at the break. What are your takeaways from the Lopes in this first half? Well, we started off in a hole. Our first unit not doing a very good guard, uh, good, good job guarding. Our second unit came in and turned the game back to our uh, way. Got to do a better job on the boards, finding guys to transition. 
you know, we just got to be patient down there. We're getting pretty good shots, but it all started with us getting in a hole and not playing defense at the beginning of the game. And so what will be your message to the team to turn up the defense and also go out there and contain Williams? Well, that first team better play defense or they ain't going to play. I mean, that second team will come in and play. I had to take them out a little bit at the end because Jared and Matt worked so hard and they got tired. But if I'm not getting anything from them on that side of the floor, then, you know, I can't play them on this side of the floor because they're killing us right now. All right, thank you very much. And guys, as Dan Marley goes to deliver that message to his squad, we know one thing. They certainly respond to their coach's words, so we'll see what they bring out the second half. But the key will be to contain Williams, 14 points to his name so far this game. No doubt about it, Kate. Yeah, that first unit apparently needs to play some defense. We shall see. Kate will be back with our halftime festivities, including a conversation with Mr. Jerry Colangelo. Keep it right here as the Broncos lead it by one at the half. About time we washed it. Getting ready to trade it in. What are you doing? Just a little shopping. Wait, a new truck. Don't you think I should be involved? Of course. We'll head over to Sanderson Ford as soon as I'm done. I don't have time today. Hope we're going with four doors this time. Ooh, of course. I know exactly what I want. I mean, we want. A lightning blue Ford F-150 Super Crew with EcoBoost. All done. Shop from home, buy from home, we deliver. From the dealer you can trust, Sanderson Ford. Performance is your profession. You excel in bringing the best out of people. Through leadership and insight, you help others fulfill their promise. You share a unique bond with your family and cherish your time together. But you strive to take the next step in your career. GCU's online degree program in performance psychology will enhance your skills in helping others succeed. Master your craft in an online PhD program that puts innovation and technology at the heart of education. And you can do it all within a tight schedule without disrupting other aspects of your life. With a PhD in performance psychology, you'll have the tools you need to elevate your performance to the next level. When human excellence meets cutting edge technology, business advances. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back inside GCU Arena. Well, right now in this whiteout crowd, the crowd be entertained by the human flags. But in the first half, it was an entertaining game to say the least. Right now, GCU just a point behind Boise State Broncos as Dan Marley addresses the team and talks a little bit about defense and what he wants to see in the second half. And coming at you live from the court here on our Lopes Halftime Show on your view, I'm Kate Longworth, and I'm joined now by GCU Special Consultant, who really needs no introduction if you are a sports fan, especially if you're here in the Valley. Jerry Colangelo, thank you so much for being with us right here, right now, Mr. Colangelo. And next week, sports fans are going to get the treat to see the Colangelo Classic and some great teams in it. How did it all come about that this was organized? Well, the Basketball Hall of Fame puts on a number of classics, doubleheaders around the country, and they asked if I would be interested in having one in my name in Arizona. And it all came together, and uh, it's going to be a great doubleheader. When you look at the caliber of teams that are coming in, you know, it's Nevada, Tennessee, and Gonzaga, and of course, GCU. So. We're looking forward to it, and it's big for college basketball here in our state. It's big for our program, too. Yeah, when you look at this program and Dan Marley, their precious he's left on this squad from day one, and you are here in the stands for so many of the games, and I know you're close with President Mueller as well as Dan Marley. What have you seen from the growth of this Lopes basketball team? Well, I'm seeing growth. You know, you develop a culture, but it takes time to get, get the whole thing going, and moving up the ladder so you know we're, we're on a trajectory where we're making progress we have a we have big ambition and uh, because of the leadership of Dan Marley I'm sure we'll get there yeah 
what will it take to continue this success and continue to climb into that top 25 and step up the Lopes game to that next level? Well, he would tell you where he thinks we're pretty close. Yeah. You know, when I look at it, I would say, let's get a couple of more athletes. You know, the guard play is very important. Guard play in college basketball kind of dominates. So if we concentrate going forward, you know, in picking up a guard or two, another couple of athletes, a big strong rebounder, we'll be fine. <laughs> Just a few things on the Christmas list, that's yeah. all. But meanwhile, so many uh, famous names and players we've seen throughout uh, the Suns programs and throughout basketball here in the Valley, they come out to these games, whether it's Paul Westfall or uh, former Dan Marley teammates, and they all come out here and they say when they watch Lopes basketball, they can see Dan Marley in their style play. Do you agree with that? I, I definitely do. And, you know, there's a kind of a camaraderie relative to the, the guys who have worn Suns uniforms and GCU uniforms. <laughs> so it's great to see guys like Westfall here tonight. And we've had a lot of players come in and watch our games. Yes, and it's great to see you here in the stands. Thank you so much for joining Alrighty. us here for Thank our you. halftime show. Thank and good you. luck next week at the Colangelo Classic. And we'll be right back with more highlight stats and much, much more with Scott and Barry right after this quick break. Heart of Phoenix, GCULopes.com. There's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit GCUHotel.com today. Back live at GC Arena, where Boise State has a one-point lead over the Lopes, 36-35. Gary Vitell, Scott Williams back at our perch in 103 after uh, a game that uh, saw the Broncos open up an 18-9 lead before that second unit came in and provided a spark. They were wonderful off the bench, exactly what Coach Marley needed. They only, you know, were aggressive on offense, so they got that ball in that painted area, and they got stops defensively, really shut down the Broncos' attack. Time now to check out our Dignity Health halftime highlights and stats. Dignity Health, hello, human kindness, offensive rebounding, a big key early. Yeah, it was Haney underneath there, getting that one up under the basket. They had three quick offensive boards before you could even blink. I love this one by Oscar Fur, who had been struggling. One dribble pull up from behind the arc, knocks down the triple. But it was Williams really was the guy that did most of the damage. I love that hook underneath. The, Alston for the easy jam, and then Milstead off the pine. Just doesn't give up on the play, takes it hard to the rack, and one puts it in there. That really got the crowd on their, free, their feet, but Williams again, boy, I'll tell you what, he is a thief in shorts, and I love that lefty jam. He goes flying down that left wing with the slam, and I love this one right here, because the veteran Martin just moving traffic out of the way, gives Drexel that three ball, and then another steal by the Thief to call him Ali Baba, and then hard to the rack for the and one finish. That really was the one play that really got uh, the Broncos back on top. And then Oscar Frere, he comes back and answers with a three of his own uh, on that left wing. So field goal percentage is not where Coach Marley's going to want it. 
Broncos shooting 57 percent in that first half. Now reading the bounty by three. The assist seven to three in favor of the Lopes bench points. There you see it. The margin there is 10 to five. They have definitely responded as Coach Marley said going off with uh, Kate Longworth at the half. That first unit's got to play on both ends of the court. Got to play tough. No doubt. We will be back. Kate, Kate will be back with more of our halftime festivities here from GCU Arena as we continue from Phoenix, Arizona with the Broncos up by one, 36-35. Canyon University. Curiosity fuels you. It helps you understand the world around you. It's your guide through life. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Change is difficult, but Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. While businesses are being transformed by artificial intelligence and analytics, GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation and make sense of the world. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems and sharing your insights, you're helping to build a better tomorrow for you, your community, and your family. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Welcome back. A wide out here at GCU Arena and a nail biter out on the court as GCU continues to play strong but needs to step it up, especially on defense as Boise State carries a one point lead here at the break 36 35 the score and really the first half if you missed any of it well you really missed the Williams show as we take a look at our streets of New York leading scorers from the first half streets of New York pizza pasta and subs for over 40 years and as I mentioned Williams just on fire tonight the looks trying to find a solution for containing him 14 points seven for nine six rebounds and he's had a couple of steals that the team has turned into points on the board. Meanwhile, for GCU, Oscar Freyer, we've been talking about him stepping up his game, and we've been seeing that in the first half, 10 points to his name. Trey Dexter with nine points, and Michael Finke with six points to his name. And uh, right now, the Lopes, what they need to do is contain their home court advantage, protect the home court, because right now, when you look at home wins, since the 2015-2016 season, GCU ranking within the top five of college basketball division one action. St. Mary's in that top spot, 55 wins. Meanwhile, Kentucky with 54, along with Oregon and Louisville. But GCU coming on strong with 52 victories. Their last loss here, and I'm not pulling that jinx. I'm telling you this so I can reverse jinx it, right? Last loss here was back on January 11, 2018 against New Mexico State. That was after 10 straight wins. And now, right now, the Wolves trying to defend that home court, see what they can do tonight in the second half. And like you guys mentioned, it's all going to be up to that first unit. The good thing about the Wolves, they are deep. We've seen that throughout the season. And now we'll see what we can find out in the second half. Guys, you ready? No doubt about it. Oscar Freyer has come to play. He's ready to go. Ten points in the game. Four of six from the field. Two of three from the arc. And he's got four rebounds. Three of them defensively. Now, he, he's had a different type of um, energy to begin this basketball game. You can tell he was going to be uh, more aggressive, you know, on both ends of the floor. But certainly on the offensive end where he's really been struggling. He has made his presence felt, and I love the way he's gotten on the glass. You've mentioned those, those four rebounds in traffic, one on the offensive end. But at the end of the day, that starting group, all of those guys minus double figures in the plus minus category, except for Drexel. So they rest of those guys, they got to pick it up. 
Yeah, we heard as much from Coach Marley when he chatted to Kate at half time. Drexel certainly shining there in that opening half. The uh, first unit is going to have to respond here, down by one in the second half. Take a quick look at the NCAA rankings. Gonzaga will be here a week from tomorrow to take on Tennessee in that opener of the Jerry Colangelo Classic. 1 p.m. tip-off, and then the elope follow against Nevada. And you'll see Nevada number five, eight and zero, oh, the Wolfpack. Tennessee as one behind at six. Michigan's playing well. Auburn, Michigan State, and Kentucky rounds out the top ten. Your North Carolina Tar Heels at 11. Iowa, another Big Ten team at 14. Ohio State, 16. Texas with a win over some other school that might be in the 11th spot, but we don't want to bring that up. Oregon, Purdue, and Texas Tech round out the uh, top 20. Buffalo, how about the Bulls? The Badgers, Villanova's close to dropping out of there at 6-2. and two. Yeah, Villanova starting to bounce back. They started out slow and lost a couple games, and they're, they're bouncing back. And my Tar Heels, though, I, I have not been impressed with the energy on the floor out of North Carolina. Duke's been playing pretty good. They were in a battle in that first half tonight. They had a, a, a home game. So, you know, college basketball, it's not going to be a runaway for anybody from start to finish. I don't believe Gonzaga looks pretty good. And you said that Michigan team, they play defense the way Virginia Cavaliers play defense. They really get after teams. Don't allow teams to score more than 60 points very often. You know, we got a, a little bit of time here before the start of the second half. Uh, we lost a, a former president, in George Herbert Walker Bush, president number 41. And boy, the response uh, social media and through the media has just been overwhelming. Uh, the respect for this individual. Well, you got a chance to meet with a White House visit in what, 1991 after the uh, World Championship. Yeah, very fortunate to meet um, uh, President Bush. What a great man he was. I, you know, just decency and honor, kindness, service his entire life to the, to the, you know, the country. Uh, just will be a, a, a national treasure that has been lost. I, um, I can't say enough about how hospitable he was to accept us. And I know these presidents have to do a lot of those types of ceremonies, but it really seemed like he genuinely was interested in meeting us, shaking our hands, uh, and very gracious taking photos. I, I had a video camcorder in my hand, one of those old camcorders, yeah. but I cannot find oh. the tapes. I wish I could find some of that action I had from that ceremony in that White House in Ro uh, Rose Garden uh, visit. We got to go in the Oval Office, did I well, tell that's, you that? Oh, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I had actually have a, a nice picture with uh, him shaking my hand, but I was so young and dumb, I had my sunglasses on, so I looked like I'm Secret Service. <laughs> It is a uh, sacred place, there's no doubt about it. I've been fortunate as well to, to get a visit to the uh, Oval Office as well. So, but uh, man, the, you don't, it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, the, the respect for him, that says a lot. But man, he did it just about everything. World War II hero, and secret uh, CIA director, vice president, and then president. We are back underway. Boise State on top by one. Off the glass, a quick bucket again for Boise State. Well, they start fast. This Boise State team out of that locker room. If you are not ready to play and get your knees bent and hike those shorts up and get ready to slide your feet, you're going to get burned. Another sloppy turnover. That was sloppy by Freyer. Dickinson got them on the board first. Freyer got a hand in that, knocked it out. Came back after that errant pass and came back defensively to help out. Williams in trouble. Jessup got into some foul trouble in the opening half. Down low, Williams. Fouled by Michael Finke. Yeah, left hand player. <laughs> Just a tough guard down there on that. He gets that ball so close to the basket. He's got those live legs. And he just gets Pinky going one direction and snaps it back the other way. It's that body contact. Pinky's second personal foul. Now they're starting to disrupt Williams. <laughs> That's got to be tough. Huh? You got all those habits behind the basket. The two players got his instrument out up over his head. And they're waving crazy things. Tough to concentrate. You got to block all that out and just focus on inside the back of the rim. And he, as he did there. 
One of three from the free throw line for Williams. Four point lead. Drexel. To the near side. Prayer quickly to Labor. Labor. Jessup came over there. Freed up Prayer. And the rebound pulled down by the Broncos. They're on the run quickly. Ooh, what a sweet fake there by Pat Emily. Looked like he was going behind the back. Yeah, he cuffed it uh, between his uh, in his hands and his wrist. So as he tried to move the ball behind his back, he had control over it and snapped it back in front and laid it in. That's a whole school right there. His first unit better start responding or Marley's going to get some guys up off the bench and a pass like that's not going to help. Oh, Labor just got a Christmas gift early. Oh, look at Allie Labor just having some issues. Dribble that one off his foot. And here they come, Martin and Jackson. Yeah, Coach Marley's not going to put up with that type of sloppy Good offensive grief. play with the basketball. It's too precious. It's like gold. You've got to treat it with value. And uh, try to go high-low. I understand if Finkie's trying to go high-low to, uh, to Labor or Labor's trying to go high-low. But you've got to put some air under that basket and throw it up by the corner of the backboard so they can go up and go get it. Yeah, he wasted no time. Brought Martin and Jackson back in the two losses with some experience. Whoa. Didn't have much time left on that shot clock. Kind of snuck up on him. I think it snuck up on the coaches, too. Rayo got a hand on it, and there's oh, a foul call. I say it's goaltending. Oh. I thought he took that ball to the basket, but he's saying it was already on the basket. We'll have to get a look at that one if we can, guys. Look at this one more time. Someone goes to the block. They miss it, but the flare comes over. It had hit the backboard first. Yeah. Great call by that official. How high can Frere get up the block a shot? Once again, we don't miss a shot here. This crew, Drexel for three. Heavy, rebound, Jackson. Oh, look at the hustle. Back to Drexel. Ooh, Drexel got fouled. Yeah, Williams trying to get up on Drexel, run him off his shot, got tingled in his body. And he can get Williams in some foul trouble. That would be good if he could spend some time on the bench. But what is that, his third personal? Two for Williams. Two for Dembley. Jessup's out there with three. Sorry, my, I don't have my readers on there. Yeah, just two, just two for, for Williams. I'm all about larger font size. I'm just getting old. I refuse to admit it. Jackson, quickly. Drexel, near side. That's in. Lost the ball. It's on the floor. I don't understand why he over-penetrated that time. He got to that left block corner uh, elbow spot that he liked so much. He could have pulled right up into his little pull-up jumper he loved so much. This thing's going like, to slip away from GC. Bentley leads it. Jessup. Lethal from the arc. Cuts in. And a classic Drexel here as he's picked it up. Yeah, That's I, his fourth foul. I think, was that Drexel or Matt Jackson that stepped in that driving lane right there? That was Drexel, you're right. That was a nice job, though, because Martin recognized Jessup as a three-point shooter. Gets up on him, runs him off his spot, gets him in an uncomfortable area where he doesn't like to play between the three-point line and the basket, out of control, runs the man over. Well, foul trouble for Jessup with four. He's going to take a seat. Just knowing your personnel. So, by Dickinson. He's up Jackson. Baseline. Turning. Back out. Freyer. Seven on the shot clock. Six. Freyer off the glass and he's fouled. Well, I think the message from Coach Marler was to stop settling for these outside shots. Let's get somebody to have the heart to drive it right down the teeth of the defense. And Freyer, you know, as he's coming through there, he's going to hang in the air a little bit longer than everybody else and gets that body contact. And he picks up his first. Talked about him being a sub-60% shooter. He missed the front end of a one-on-one -on -one in the first half, not able to connect in the front end of this one. Yikes. Player almost 
Picked that one off, trying to help out. Martin got a hand on the ball. Active hands, you know, they not, can't always get your feet to the position, but if you've got your hands up and are active with your hands, you can leave lots of deflections that disrupt the flow of the your opponent's offense. Austin Williams, seven on a run here for the Broncos to start the second half. Austin, high five Jackson trying to get it down into Haney. Haney turns. Kicks back out. Long distance shot off the mark. Pulled down by Jackson. Nice job by Jackson and Martin again defensively. Up for Drexel on the bomb. Oh, no bucket. Not understanding what happened. Not I don't know if they're saying Martin ran somebody off the ball and caused the foul. Yeah. See, he's got two players running side by side. Oh, yeah. Martin just runs over. Yeah, he sold it a little bit, but there was really no need for it. Looked like Drexel was going to get that layup uncontested, regardless if Martin had run him off the ball. Emily. Williams. Dickinson. Haney, baseline drive, loses it. Lopes ball. <laughs> I think Haney traveled before he dribbled it off his knee, so either way, that was going to be probably going over to the Lopes. But Lopes right now struggling coming out of the locker room. Not a... Not the start they wanted to the second hand. They responded trailing 18 to 9 in the opening half to come back. Martin drives. Underhand. That's swatted away. Alston picked off. Freyer. Tim Finke for three. Not there. Freyer trying to come up over the top. Looking for some momentum change here, but they can't find it due to Lopes. Dembley kicked back out. Ooh. Nice save there by the Bronco. Austin, open look for three. Oh, nasty. Well, they were trying to scramble defensively, but they never could figure out who was supposed to guard who. And that was Austin with a wide open look. And this lead is up to 11 now, largest of the game in a 10 0 run. Milstead Johnson up at the scorer's table. Jackson for three. Good for Matt Jackson. Thank you. That. They needed a spark and get this crowd back into it. And finally, they were able to take a seat in this building. I believe they were on their feet for a while. Dickinson. Gembley. i by Freyer. Ten on the shot clock. Ooh, it's almost picked off by Jackson. Six on the shot clock. Five. They're running out of time. And another charge. Is that Martin? I, I think maybe he gets a little extra in his per diem for taking all these charges. No, I'm just kidding. But I love the way he comes over here. Gets high, nice and wide. Gets into that driving lane and takes that charge. Send it over to Kate Longworth. All right, thank you guys. I am joined by a couple stars from the men's and women's track team. Alexa Hokinson and Grant Carpenter. Guys, thanks so much for being here with me. And you guys are sophomore and junior years. So you've been a part of the indoor and outdoor teams that were the WAC champions the past two years. What has that meant to you to achieve such an accomplishment? Uh, it's meant a lot, especially at GCU. We just hold everybody to such a high standard, and uh, we do a really good job at, at keeping that standard as a track team. Um, being able to be a part of that's really important to me. Did you feel the pressure to repeat, or did it seem like a natural after you had that feeling of what it takes to be at the top, you wanted to go out there and do it again? Oh yeah, I definitely want to stay at the top. You know, just keep where I'm at, and I think we're going to do great things this season. And you run the 400 and 800, which really are two hard races because they're really straight out sprints, but for a longer distance. What was the draw to competing in those races? Um, they're both different events, very unique. And I feel like I have the sprint ability, but also the endurance that keeps me going. So they both like help me in each race, which is really cool. And Grant, you're the WAC champion for the decathlon. Track events, six field events. What, first of all, how difficult is that? I guess I should say. And second, what do you attribute your success to that? Uh, it's pretty difficult. It's uh, 10 events over two different days. Um, the first day just crushes you, and the second day you just got to get up and get out of bed, get yourself warm, and keep going. But I attribute a lot of my success to my coaches and my teammates. 
uh, my coach, Coach uh, Layman, Coach Todd Layman, and Coach Blood, they're such big supports. They're out there with us every day, three practices a day, and uh, they help us quite a bit. Uh, yeah. And you guys are both from the Arizona and the area. You're from Scottsdale, like said, you're from Surprise. What brought you here to GCU? Uh, just the atmosphere. The first time I stepped on campus, I knew it was different. And I knew it was a Christian campus, and I've, I've grown up in a Christian family, and it was really important to have that. What pride do you take being a student athlete in the Lopes uniform? Um, it's a huge honor, actually. Um, you know, everyone on campus looks up to you, and they see you, and they just admire you. Well, best of luck to you both in the indoor season, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah. Men's and women's indoor and outdoor track teams have found nothing but success as of late. The Lopes hoping to fuel off of that energy in the building tonight. They'll need it. Down 46-38 to the Bronco. Blazers State four of five from the field while the Lopes are one of six here in the second half. Oh, didn't go. Wacker. Milstead's got a C. Right hand, not enough. Johnson tried to get it, but He's fouled. You know, Johnson crashed in there. He, he needs to a lot of these guys, they start watching the ball when they see their teammate dribbling hard to the basket. They just stop and start watching it. Well, Johnson goes straight to the basket with Milstead. And that way he's in position, had he missed, which he did, to be able to get that ball uh, off the offensive rebound. Johnson at the line. I'm a little surprised he's actually shooting too. It wasn't a controlled rebound. And I think they got it confused as to who was actually shooting the layup. I think they're going to call a side out of bounds. Yeah, yeah, they, oh, let me look at the replay. I, I think they got Johnson and Milstead because they both went to the basket at the same time. They got him confused. So here's Milstead, and then Johnson comes in here and he gets pushed in the back. But that's not a controlled rebound right there. So that's just a that's just a um, loose ball foul would be the Boise State's fifth foul, which would be side out of bounds, no free throws. Good call. The official is a bit obstructed. A lot of bodies in a close area. <laughs> this guy's playing hard out there. I like it. This bench bunch, uh, they, they provide a spark. I know this point is still at eight. But uh, the energy at the defensive end is picked up, giving up their bodies, taking charges, switching, communicating, and scrambling, and confusing this, these Broncos. Whoa, he's back at the line. I don't know what that was all about. Maybe they are going to say he had two hands on the basketball as he was going back for that uh, putback. Three throws. And then the. Uh Cole on the stocking here. It's not a surprise when he's 60% shooting. Lo no lopes underneath there to try to get an offensive rebound should he miss this ball. Two of six now for the lopes. <laughs> 46 39 the score. Boys have stayed on top. Barwa leaves it for Williams. Williams trying to move. And Drexel. Oh, he traveled. Holy cow. I, I couldn't hear the whistle. I'm sorry. Yeah, the officials were right over. This place was pretty loud, but he did a bunny hop down there trying to get by Drexel. Nice job defensively. A lot of guys really switching, communicating, pointing their pistols, talking to one another out there, and that's what you need. Oh, Martin. You can see Hello, William, Williams Harwell. not talking, although I think Martin might have got one in the thigh there. Johnson for three. Oh, that's a big bucket. How about it? Guy has been struggling from the field in recent games. All of a sudden goes to the free throw line, knocks down a freebie. Next time he goes down behind the line, he knocks down the three to give the Lopes a 7-0 run. This bench is doing the job. 7-0 run over the last 141 for the Lopes, trying to get back into it again here in the second half. Down by four. Good foul by Johnson underneath. That's a good situation there. He's down there with a the guy mismatched. He's got 30 pounds and probably five or six inches on Johnson, but that one right there, that's a little tricky right there. <laughs> he really crossed up the defender. But I love this one right here. He's got the big fella down there. He's like, no, no, you're not going to get an easy bucket. I'm going to go ahead and just make them take, uh, call this foul, and you guys have to try to earn it on a baseline out of bounds play. 
Johnson just three of 22 from the arc before hitting that one. Loose ball picked up by CJ. Oh, looky, looky. Johnson foul. I think they got Alston. Yes, Alston they did. was trying to get that ball back. And at first I thought Johnson was playing, or you're dribbling in the crowd here, but you can see Alston just kind of reaches right in there there and just takes Johnson's arm. So the Lopes are going to be shooting free throws the rest of this basketball game. We still got 12.51 to play. Well, Luke Drexel looking to hit that three. I would have liked to see him drive it in there. You know you got an opportunity, even just a, on the dribble drive, you could have got to the free throw line. Definitely. Alston, Wacker, quickly, Williams. Hart's going to need some help down there against Williams. Up over the top, doesn't get the help. Now, it's just too easy down there for Williams against Martin. That's just simple right shoulder turn, and he's really good with his, I mean, he's left-handed, so he's really good with throwing that lefty hook right over the shorter defender. Johnson moves. Little floater. Drops! Contact there. Yes, I don't understand was. why there wasn't a call there, but Johnson with some good concentration in the finish. Demblay. Picked off. They read that one, didn't Milstead? Tamari Milstead off the window. Oh, that's what you need. Get some easy transition buckets. That's that pressure defense we were talking about. Now this crowd's live again. Here's that spark this unit gave it, the team in the first half. Two-point Broncos lead. Harwell kicks back out, open look, somebody's got to get out there. Loose ball, Jackson. Here come the Lopes. Milstead to Martin, Martin leaves for Johnson. Johnson's going to give it back to Milstead. Milstead drives, floater off the glass, foul. Mari Milstead's first step is so quick. I mean, this is a guy who can you know, turn the slight switch off and at night and be in bed before the room got dark. He is that quick going to his right hand. Milstead to go to the line as the Lopes trail by two. We'll be right back. You will not want to go anywhere. Curiosity fuels you. It helps you understand the world around you. It's your guide through life. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Change is difficult, but Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. While businesses are being transformed by artificial intelligence and analytics, GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation and make sense of the world. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems and sharing your insights, you're helping to build a better tomorrow for you, your community, and your family. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Back at GCU Arena with the Lopes trail the Broncos, 48-46. Tonight's GCU men's basketball game is brought to you in part by Dignity Health. Hello, human kindness, and by Sanderson Ford. The best play on a new Ford is at Sanderson Ford. GCU's bench out scoring Boise State's 21-8. They have definitely been the story here tonight. Yeah, they're doing a fantastic job. Look at the track oh, team. They, man, are they are living it. it. Yeah, they are they loving it down there, doing it with uh, Bringing the thunder. I like that. That's pretty darn cool. But going back to that bench you were talking about, I mean, Martin's a plus 16. Uh, Jackson a plus 16. Johnson a plus 14. And Mills did a plus 9. And you look at the starters, Frere's a minus 19. Laver's a minus 18. Vinky's a minus 18. So. It's kind of been the tale of two teams with that bench bunch versus the starters. We get both, everybody playing well. We're going to uh, finish this game off right and win this basketball game. No doubt about it. I love it. Milstead. We sure are leaving some free points at the line. 
Hopefully that will not be a storyline. Down by one. Lopes. Ein Demley brings it up. Moves to the right. 12-2 run for GCU. Jessup back in the game with four fouls. Misses. Drexel leaves it for Milstead. Moves right. Hands it back to Trey. Trey. Jackson. Jackson. Jackson driving. Wow. And charging in down there. Good play by Wacker. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. With Wacker down there that steps off of his man, gets into that driving lane, and maybe sold that play just a little bit, but it was certainly in position. Three on Carlos. Jessup taking it in. Left hand and in. But he wasted no time. Just back at the basketball game. Gets the first time he finds the ball in his hands, and he goes hard to the rack. Milstead. Just feels like one of these games where if the Lopes could just get the lead back, I don't think they would ever surrender it again. But once they get close, it seems like they have a turnover and leads to a bucket the other way. Matt Jackson, how about that? Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Nice drive off that left wing by Matt Jackson. Kind of tiptoed around the defender, hung in the air just long enough to contort his body and get back there, shoulder square to the bucket. Dickinson hits the three. The Jackson hit his seventh point of the night. Lopes trying to claw back at the Broncos with the counterpunch. Milstead. Drexel. Right by Dembley. Trying to go up over the top. Too heavy. Pushed way out by Martin. Six on the shot clock, though. Johnson with an open look. Too heavy. Rebound. Drexel trying to get it. Milstead, he reached up over the top, did. Drexel. What into the official. Well, Drexel gets high in the air as if as this Boise State player is moving back to box out. So he's really got his position already. And then Williams kind of moves underneath him, and he's going to say that Drexel's going to got, uh, got a piece of Williams' arm. Three on Drexel. Away from the bucket, they got Milstead. Uh, officials not shy about blowing their whistles here in this second half. Both teams now will be in the bonus the rest of the way, shooting free throws on each foul. The whistles are working. Wacker, Dickinson. Dembley. Inside, almost picked off by Johnson. Williams, look out. Williams, twisting. Doesn't go. Nice job not letting Williams get back to that left shoulder. He a right shoulder turn. He wanted to use, get back to that left hand, and they took it away and forced him into kind of a goofy-footed shot in the paint that just couldn't get over the front of the rim. Alston coming in for Williams. That first unit still on the bench. Eight and a half to go. Drexel. Carlos Johnson, off the window and good. Carlos Johnson, time and time again, outside of a, a three here and there, has been very aggressive at taking the ball to the basket. Broncos up by two. Jessup. Beverly, eyed by Jackson, into the corner. Back to Beverly. Quick ball movement, look out, Jessup for three. Not there, Broncos though, the lone player under the bucket. Fresh 30 here, they come, a foul is called. Timeout on the court, 7.50 to go. Broncos on top, 5.53, 51. 
Carlos Johnson has come to play here once again here tonight as he has uh, provided that spark they needed off the bench has his second unit as well. And they've been fantastic. This bench bunch has shown a bunch of energy, really, and they've done it well, offensively, attacking offensively, but defensively as well, getting stops, giving up their body, uh, taking charges. But I love how aggressive he has been off the bounce tonight. The concentration on the finishes. I uh, really love that one right there because when you've driven the guy hard to the bucket a couple times, now suddenly they start backing up and then you can shoot that jumper over the top of the defense and knock one down. So a lot of credit to all those guys on the bench and Carlos Johnson with eight big points here in the second half. Be sure to get out and support the Lopes next Sunday, December 9th, 3.30 in the afternoon. They take on the fifth-ranked Nevada Wolfpack as part of the Jerry Colangelo Classic. The pack coming off a Sweet 16 appearance last season, led by that head coach. Everybody seems to be talking about Eric Musselman. Twins Caleb and Cody Martin, number one ranked Gonzaga, will take on number six, Tennessee at one. Phoenix will be the epicenter of the college basketball universe next Sunday. Great tickets still available by going to gculopes.com slash events or by contacting the GCU box office at 602-639-8979. So old, I remember Eric Musselman's father coaching the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Bill Musselman. There he is, Jerry Colangelo. RJ Williams, a, a long list of players the Lopes have had to battle here early on this season. Yeah, he's been fantastic. Eh? He's a you know, lefty that has really confused the Lopes at times. He's taken a hard for the basket. He's 8 of 11 from the field. Um, he's got six boards in this game, so he's doing what he normally does, 17 points. He averages uh, set 16 on the season and seven boards, so nice start for him to his game. I really like the way he plays in. What way is he a thief on defense? He likes to get in that passing lane, steal that basketball game. Basketball. He averages 35 minutes a night, Barry, so he's one of these guys that knows how to stay on the floor and is productive with the minutes that he gets. He's at 30 minutes in county tonight. 56% shooting for Boise State. Derek Alston to the line. 92% free throw shooter coming in. What a turnaround from a season ago for Alston, averaged a point last year. 12.7 average coming in game number seven for the Broncos. They got four guys that average in double figures and a fifth that averages nine. So they spread it around nice. Three-point lead for Boise State. Back out. Oh, Jackson got it ball tip, but it went into Carlos Johnson's hands. He got fouled. Are there two Carlos Johnsons out there tonight? It seems like this cat is everywhere. I mean, a shot that gets blocked out of the out of the corner, and somehow Johnson just goes quicker to the basketball than everybody else, and attacks the hoop. And Alston is taxing hard across the arm. Hey, four of nine. I wasn't going to say anything, but with the struggles from the free throw line, the Lopes have had, so I wanted to make sure that first one went in. But you talked about that. You know, the second half, when you're clawing from behind, you don't want to look at that stat sheet at the end of the night and say, no, oh, he came up a point or two short. Where, where'd we lose it? And, you know, he struggled from the free throw line. Those are the easy ones to, you know, to see and, and be able to get. Well, a 78% free throw shooter coming into tonight's action. One point lead for Boise State. They seem to be able to counter. An open back, a bit of a cushion. And they come up with a stop. GCU. Williams. Brayer came out for support. Dickinson drives. Right hand and enough off of the glass. And Matt Jackson, I know he's got switched out on a smaller player. You're better off making him shoot it over the top of you than being too close where you get burned all the way to the basket. A lot easier to make a layup than it is to make a 16-footer with a hand in your face. Dickinson averaged 5.7 coming in. He's got 11. The junior guard from Norman, Oklahoma, and Damari Milstead puts it home. He beat, he just nice right through the right side of the lane. I mean, he had that ball at the three-point line, and that first step is so quick. 
No held side defender can recover. Toe to toe. Drive. Martin again. My favorite Martin down there. What did he say? That's my third one. Is he holding up three fingers? He loves stepping in those driving lanes and taking that contact, making Mama proud. One more time, sees him coming there, gets to that position. Oh my goodness. Takes it right in the center of his body. Four fouls on Dembley. Well, they got the stop they needed. Now can they convert on the offensive end to regain the lead? Dembley's got four. Jessup has four. No stay. Johnson. Moving, weaving, twisting, turning, left hand, and it goes! Close! Up by one! Well-designed play by the coaching staff. Well, Johnson right through the middle of the double screen. Really confused the defense as how they were going to play him. Then Johnson just attacked the basket. Credit that bucket to Coach Marley as well as a the tenacity of Johnson to go driving right down there. And boy, he put him in the spin cycle. Timeout, Coach Rice and the Broncos. Crowd on their feet trying to push this team on. 5.49 to go. Well, I was talking about how GCU, if they can get the lead, I wonder if Boise State would ever be able to get it back. And this crowd is electric right now. This bench bunch is doing their darn thing. All bench in the second half, 42 points. And I, I would not be surprised if Coach Marley lets them ride the rest of the way. I guess you'll have to see what their conditioning is like, but they've been the ones that have done most of the damage tonight. I know that you want your starters to be able to finish out ball games, but Coach Marley knows his team better than I, of course. He may just ride these guys the rest of the night. Rayer with 10, Hillstead with 11, Johnson with 14, Jackson has seven. Tim Finke, Michael Finke, Labor. Michael had six early points. There's no doubt in my mind that Carlos Johnson is a better player off the bench. He yep. was struggling yep. in the first half of games. In those first three games, he went scoreless in the first half. He's better coming off the bench. Let's send it over to Kay Longworth. Well, guys, you talked about the Finky brothers, and it just keeps getting better when it comes to Finkies here and the, supporting the Lopes because back at Midnight Madness, the Finky brothers, we talked about Tim and Michael getting this dream opportunity to play together. They also have an older brother playing at Army. However, what you might not have known is there's also a little sister, Finky, and going back to that Midnight Madness, she made the trip out here without her parents, just on a discovery trip to GCU and fell in love with the, the campus and the whole life here. And of course, Midnight Madness, how exciting that is. And so, although Michael Finke will be graduating at the end of this, Tim Finke will never be without a family member here during his GCU career, as his little sister will be joining him on campus next year. How does he feel about that? <laughs> Not quite so sure. Came out here to get away from family. Everybody's joining him out here now. <laughs> they got a piece of this GCU atmosphere, and they love it. It's a little Big chilly in Champagne around this time of the year. Yes, it did. <laughs> How about this bench? 32 to 9. Boise State looking to bounce back. But a rebound, a big one underneath. Looks like Jackson's going to be called for the foul. They got to be on that ball a lot quicker defensively. Yeah, and they got to, you know, that's a long shot. A triple outside by Jessup and just didn't do a good job of boxing out. They got. Two of the areas of that uh, triangle that you want to try to form when you're boxing out, but right in the middle, that's the most important one. You got to protect that area and slow to get to that position and give up the easy second chance opportunity. Oh, well, 56% free throw shooter coming in, hits the front end and the back end. And again, they take the lead 58 57, 5 23 and counting. No step. I'd buy Harwell. Ooh, got a hand on it to Harwell. Most ball with 20 on the shot clock. They like to start their offense with that high entry pass to one of the bigs, but Boise State, for the most part tonight, has done a very good job defending it. Look at they get Jessup out yeah. here. He's got those four fouls. Do not want him to pick up his 
fifth foul here on the defensive end. Smart coaching there with Coach Leon Rice. Milstead. 14, 13 on the shot clock. Milstead trying to move. Jackson open look for three. Oh! Good! Crunchy! Nice penetrating pitch by Milstead. Jackson with a big three-point ball. Season high for Matt Jackson. Seven lead changes in this game. And here we go. Tied up. Yeah, that's a mismatch. Williams has had his way with the smaller Jared Martin. They're going to have to do somebody, bring somebody in off that bench. They want to single cover him or start doubling him when he's got that ball below the free throw line. Johnson. Lost the ball. No foul call. Mm. A lot of contact underneath a lot there, of but Marley. they're letting them play after, after having such a quick whistle. The first half of this second half, there's a lot of contact there, no whistle at all. They lose the ball right before it. Coach Marley doesn't like the no call. 60-60, GCU Boise State, under four and a half to go. In the corner, Harwell, eyed by Freyer, kicked back out Williams. Around it goes, Dickinson inside. Turning, twisting, right hand. Does it go, pulled down by Jared Martin. Milstead brings it up, arming down. Loose left, ball loses the handle. Sloppy, sloppy, Williams. Back-to-back -back turnovers at GCU and crucial time to score this game here. Under four minutes to play. I don't know why they rush it. It seemed like they were rushing it. Just take their time bringing it up there. Going around and Martin got a hand on it. Jared Martin, Mr. D. Twisty, turning, Johnson doesn't go. Uh, Johnson makes spectacular move but couldn't finish. Interesting to see that Coach Marley has not ridden his bench guys long enough. May want to come back with a starter or two. Under three and a half to go. Tied at 60. Harwell, near side, looks inside. Kick back out. Dickinson for three. Way off the mark. Habits are going to let him know about it. Yeah, Shot clock was about to blow up on him. He had two seconds to try to fire up a long one. Not his strength. 311 is on the clock. This game is tied at 60. If you love college basketball, you're not going anywhere. Label me. You know you want to. Don't be shy. You do it behind my back. So say it to my face. face. You don't know me. You know what I am? I'm a pitcher. I'm a striker. I'm a point guard. I'm a linebacker. I'm a setter. Shortstop. High jumper. Wrestler. Defender. Goalie. Student. Student athletes. That's who we are. There's an exciting destination for food, fun, and golf in the heart of Phoenix. Come to the GCU Hotel and Canyon 49 Grill, where our hospitality management students gain real-world experience and deliver unmatched service. Enjoy beautiful amenities like a resort-style pool, full-service fitness center, championship golf course, and coffee shop GCBC. Canyon 49 Grill serves American fare all day and happy hour with a great vibe and Lopes pride. Room rates start at $89 per night. Visit gcuhotel.com today. Sorry, I just had to stop my biting of my nails in this nail biter here. 60-60, Boise State, GCU. Just over three minutes to go, and the competition for GCU, it's only gonna get tougher. Next weekend in the Colangelo Classic, they're gonna go up against Nevada, and the caliber of, comp of competition is not lost on these players. Yeah, it's great. The exposure is great playing against those uh, top teams. And yeah, Nevada's top five, top six, one of the best in the country. So it gives, up, gives us an opportunity to go out and prove ourselves against the best. Uh, I think we can definitely compete with them. And uh, you never know, we, if we play well and knock down shots, we're going to be right there at the end of the game. So uh, it'll give us some notoriety if we can really uh, put something up, put, put a good game together and hopefully get a win. It's Division I college basketball at its finest, as Jared Martin was expecting.
explaining with his mom in town. The Lopes looking forward to facing off against fifth rank Nevada next week, part of the Jerry Colangelo Classic. And if you are a college basketball fan, when you want to be a top in the the next Sunday for that doubleheader as Gonzaga will also take on number six, Tennessee. And tip off for both of those games starting at 1 p.m. with GCU having the afternoon game. All right, Laver on the court, Freyer on the court. Milstead, Johnson, and Martin. Freyer takes it. Boise State putting a little bit of heat, backing up now. Approaching three minutes to go. Tied at 60. Interesting to see if they try that high handoff at the rim for Oscar Freyer that they like to do out of timeouts. Oh, picked off. Read that like a book. Williams. Well, the pass is slow. The timing's off on that play, and Williams has been able to jump that route like a defensive back several times tonight, get easy buckets. Big, big mistake there by the Lopes. Johnson. A lot of heat. Williams with five steals. Milston got some room. Leans in. That'd be Lopes ball with nine on the shot clock. Williams here, he just jumps this route, grabs his fifth steal tonight, and nobody gets back to try to foul him and make him put it on the line. And if you're hustling back, you go down there and take an intentional foul, not a flagrant foul, but an intentional foul, put a poor free throw shooter on the line, but he's just cat quick, jumping inside that passing area. 2.27 to go, Jared Martin, uh, Mr. Defense, doing it again here tonight. I mean, he does such a nice job of staying low, playing with active hands, gets his hands on balls, gives up his body to take charges, and you know, he, he's got, that's his third charge of the night. And I love this one right here because he playing a small defender, but he doesn't give up on the play and is able to meet him on the rim, block that away. So, you know, the senior, he knows how important those types of stops are down the stretch. He's giving his all. No doubt about it. It was amazing at the uh, Wooden Legacy Classic. After that opening game, the uh, coaching staff for Seton Hall just really talked up the spark that Jackson, Milstead, and Jared Martin gave to the Lopes. It was a, a battle till the end. They uh, said they watched about five minutes of uh, Lopes tape, and they watched Jared Martin, and they said they couldn't believe a guy didn't care about points and how much he cared about defense. Hey, it's awesome. hard to find those type of players. Inside, though! How about that? How about that? Off the window! Well, you know, they got so used to overplaying that guy coming to the top, they decide they're going to take two steps and then go back door. With a nod at 62. Rocky and Creed going toe to toe. Jassip with four fouls on the floor. Freyer. Dembley. Dembley runs into Martin. Too far out. Yeah, a little too far out. And because the play is not moving towards the basket, it's one of these plays that's kind of more side, side to side action. Maybe a little too aggressive in trying to get the steal. I like the, I like the switch, but moving his feet clearly. Yeah. Uh, and the player going to the side, that's more of a block than it is a charge, in my opinion. Pat Dembley. Oh, this crowd. It's loud. Bounces around and goes down. Yeah, that ball bounced in the rim, back up to about the top of the square on the backboard before falling back in. Close to 73% free throw shooter, Pat Dembley. Doesn't go. One point, Broncos lead. Oh, buckle your seatbelts wow. in for a wild ride down the stretch. 142 and counting, Labor. Trying to turn, big white, short, foul. Got Wacker. Yeah, Wacker just a little too much body underneath. Good job by Labor putting the pressure on the defense. Now, Labor's got to go to the line to make these free throws right here. He's a 74% shooter. Now, you you got to make these when the pressure is on. Looking for his first point.
Five of 11 from the line. Next practice, just free throws for everybody, right? 100 free throws. For there you go. Just the second one. The fourth one there. Obviously, that ties it back up. Now can yeah, substitute a little offense, defense. They're getting Matt Jackson back in this game here. A little quicker defender so they can execute their switching along the perimeter. Tied at 63. Minute and a half to go. Maybe. This, these two teams with a double overtime a season ago. Jessup. Far side, quickly inside, falling as Williams gets it back. Loses it. Fire on the run. Oh, and the Milstead's legs, my goodness gracious. Oh, they're going to give it to the, the Broncos. Broncos. Well, great job defensively. Everybody's switching, and they get this still here. I thought Oscar Frere was a little too unselfish. He should have just taken it to the basket. Man, tried to make a tough pass to Milstead when he could have just glided down that left lane and all the way to the basket. Nobody was going to stop him before he was he able to take off to the rim. Yeah, the replay did it indicate it went off of Bronco. I think Oscar is reliving that right now. Could have taken it and blown the doors off of this crowd. Yeah, you know, I, I, when he first got the ball, had he got it to Milstead, I think that Milstead would have been off to the races. But after a couple of dribbles, the defender had closed enough to make it a tough pass where he would have been better off just trying to take it all the way into the bucket himself. I think the officials are speaking to our TV crew right now. I, you know, Coach Marley obviously using this opportunity for the replay to draw draw up a nice play. I hope they're going to take something inside, but you can see it goes off the inside left knee of is that Dimbley and out of bounds. Yeah, it, it, Hit Dickinson. Oh, was it Dickinson? Left knee. Yeah, Dickinson. Inside Dickinson's yep. left knee and out, and out of bounds. And it's a good thing Frere wasn't able to catch up with it there because I don't think he would have done anything but turned it back over to, to Bo uh, uh, Boise State. Man. I'll tell you what. This crew does not miss a shot. Six straight years, these young and these men and women that are on this group are are like, I mean, what else can they're, you they're say? Wonderful. I mean, they they're don't right miss on a top shot. of it. No, they're right on top of it. And I'm going to give the officials a lot of credit too. They've been correct uh, almost every time tonight. Oh my goodness, a foul off the ball, the ball out of bounds. That's going to be two shots. Oh my. That's going to be two shots. Going to send the lows to the line here with the score tied. Two free throws. One more time as Oscar right. Frere's trying to come down the lane. They just reached out and grabbed him. Is that, is that Jessup? Jessup? He's got That's, five. He's gone. Ooh, lethal from the arc. Jessup's going to have to sit down. TCU starters just one point this half. Jessup can just never get into a rhythm tonight. Just five points on two of six shooting. Savage. Santiago. Wheeler. Those are our all-stars here with the uh, shots tonight from the TV crew. The list goes on and on. All right, Oscar. You had uh, sloppy moments from the free throw line earlier. This is a chance to make, get redemption. You know, typically I'd blame me for that, but I don't think I can. Anymore, you know? It's a little flat. A little flat on there. Yeah, on the, yeah, not holding this far follow through. You've got to be confident that line. Oh. <laughs> Wolves lead it by one. 108 and counting. Fans moving to their feet. Wacker turns, bounce pass, open lane. Not there, put back is. Williams again oh, on fall. that weak side, got pushed in the back, but still had enough body control to tip that thing in with his left hand and a chance to make it a three-point play. You had the stop you wanted, but you don't get the man boxed out. 
Williams is able to put it in. I'll tell you what, he's, Boise State holds on to win this game. Obviously, the player of the game. 11 of 14 from the field now with 23 looking for his 24th point. Wilms just cannot stymie the top players, whether it's Ty Cockfield, Miles Powell, or tonight, R.J. Williams. Somebody's got to step up and silence. This crowd trying to do their part as they do every home game. That's 63% shooter. This is the biggest. Williams. Does it go? One point lead. Here come the Lopes. Under a minute to go. Timeout, Coach Marley. Yeah, Coach Marley's got a couple timeouts in his pocket, decides to burn one right there. 28 of 29 points this second half have been scored by the GCU bench. That one point labor on a free throw. Yeah, they, they did a nice job off the line. They played with confidence. They've been aggressive. They've attacked the basket. They've gotten opportunities through steals and transition, and easy buckets. Gotten themselves to the free throw line. And they converted a few more, though. We put be sitting here with our pumps sweating. But nice job by this bench spot. I mean, Jared Martin, he only got two points tonight. And I don't know if anybody's affected this game more than him the way he's been playing defense. 53.3 on the clock. Broncos up by one. Drexel, Milstead, Carlos Johnson, Freyer, Labor on the court. Whoop. Drexel to inbound. Alston on Drexel. I got to get this ball inbounds. Got to secure this basketball. There you go. Milstead. Labor. Watts Freyer. Takes it himself. Backing in. Twisting. Turning. Off the window and good. Holds up by one. Coach Marley called a timeout. Got one of his best players back on the floor. And they went to him down low. We talked about it in the show open. That's where Labor was so good out on the road, taking his time when he gets the ball. They isolate that block for him, clear everybody out. No help for uh, Welker down there, or Wacker rather, and then he just operates there and finishes high at the basket. Nice job. And Coach Marley and staff, good job by Labor. They can see why this kid was the preseason WAC player of the year pick. Despite that, his first bucket tonight. What are they looking at? I'm not sure. I'm sure if they're trying to get the game clock correct after the main basket prior to the Broncos calling that timeout. They may put a few tenths of a second or maybe a second back on the game clock. Well, let well, me just ask a question. Was that a Boise State timeout, or was that an official timeout? I I, I looked down. I thought I saw Marley, but I, I don't know. I think they are checking the time right now. Well, let's take a look at the replay and see if we can. Upper left of on the, the backcourt uh, on, on the stanchion there. It's 41 point, yeah, okay. 41.0. Uh, and I, and I, be, I believe the clock right there was should should stop until the ball is inbounded. A couple a couple seconds slipped off, but I don't know if that was after the ball was inbounded or not. GCU on top by one. Coach Rice smiling at Williams. Well, as he should. Mm -hmm. Williams has been fantastic. You, you, if, if the Lopes are going to put the ball in their best player's hand, you better believe Coach Rice over at the BC, uh, the BC Boise State bench is going to put the ball in their hot player's hand. And Williams trying to get him up something uh, down there on the block as well. 
They did add. It's now 40.9 on the clock. Timeout's going to be called. They figure all that out. Both teams able to take a little bit of a breather here with 40.9. Damari Milstead again, the big night, 11 points, 28 minutes of play. Yeah, he, he's done a real good job um, running this second group as well. He's kind of distributed the basketball, gotten everybody involved, whether it's um, you know, backdoor passing, or jumping out and getting steals himself. And, all this game all turned around. They were down 18 to 9. Turned around when they put this bench bunch in the, in the basketball game and they played with a ton of confidence and slowed that Broncos attack down. They were off and running. It looked like they were going to score an eight, have an 80 point game tonight, but it was the bench that slowed them down as they were shooting 60% from the field. Looks have done pretty well against the Mountain West Conference. Winners of three of their last four against the Mountain West. Again, these two teams battled the two overtimes a season ago before the Broncos won it 85-80. And they go toe-to-toe -to -toe here again tonight. Lopes up by one. And here come the Broncos. Obviously a lot of time left in this game, but this is a huge stop. No battle. Dembley leaves it for Harwell. Williams, look out. Wacker trying to free him up. Williams trying to move on Martin. He's got that left hand extended. No bucket. Travel! Travel! Williams called for the travel. And Martin does it again. He gets the stop he needs. He was battling. He was giving everything he got to try to keep Martin from getting back to that left hand. And then when he tries to go in there, he just does a... Missed that pivot play. Got to be careful. The press is on. Ooh, Drexel. Milstead brings it up. Ball control. Wow. Yeah, they're going to foul Milstead. Oh, they got to try to make this game a little longer, obviously, with the shot clock off, realizing they got to get a foul. They put Milstead on the line. Milstead's got to get where the Lopes have had some, some tough times. Got to knock the cup free throws down. But look at Martin there. Does a nice job, he doesn't reach. Stays down and even that was a little chicken wing there. Oh, big bucket, free throws. Crucial right now, crucial. Well, this is the big one. They are up two right now, which is great, but you can still get beat with a three. You want to knock this one down so you can guard the three-point line and force everything inside the back. Oh, Milstead, clutch. Don't give up a three here. Everybody play out above that three-point line. Dembley hands it off. Moving back out, 15, 14. Harwell drives. Harwell drives, he loses the ball. Oh, they're gonna Martin. get Martin with the trip. But Martin does the right thing. He gets out there high enough to keep him off that three-point line. Put him in drive, which gets him in a little bit of a bad position. You can see he's fallen already, and then he decides, I gotta reach out and get a piece of the wrist. But also important, maybe you wanna get some big bodies back in there on that free throw line because you know, Dimley can make the first one, but intentionally miss the second one, although I think there's too much time left in the game for that. But if you got to go get and uh, get it secure this, this rebound, that could be a disaster for the Lopes to get up the three-point play on the three-point line. Oh, Dimley, cool water. Okay, yeah, fans. coming back in with labor, get a little bit more size down there, bring out Mike Jackson, a little bit more beef. You got... Martin down there. Surprised they took out didn't leave Jackson underneath there. At least to get this basketball secured so Dimley try to bang this hard off the backboard. Oh, money for Dimley. Okay. Austin comes back in. Got the good Harwell. hands crew out there along with Labor. Good free throw shooter. They run the baseline. Got to get this ball inbound. No doubt about it. One point Lopes lead. Johnson to inbound. Milstead frees up. Milstead there, looking for some timeout. Oh, timeout. Interesting. 8.4.
Bernie calls timeout on the floor. Nothing really changes. We've got a pretty much reset. I think maybe an opportunity for Coach Marley to get some subs back in the basketball game, but we're out of timeouts now. So that's a that's a tough one. So you're gonna end down the ball again. You can't call timeout if you can't find a player to throw it to. You gotta get this ball in. You do not want to get a five-second violation on that sideline. Wow. And that's a tough area to inbound the basketball, and you can no longer run the baseball. Coach Rice and his staff well aware of this. The Broncos are going to be all out. Pressure on the ball. What a game. If you haven't secured your ticket yet, next Sunday afternoon, Talking Stick Arena, downtown Phoenix, Nevada, the Wolf Pack. They need the Wolf Nation. Labor, Mark, Milstead, Drexel, Johnson. Martin to inbound. 8.4 on the clock. Alston on the ball on Martin. What a long arms ball. Alston is. Oh, look at it. Get it into Drexel. Easily. He's got to follow him. Well, it took some time. 5.2. Drexel. Go to the line. I, I understand wanting to try to steal the basketball quickly if you can, but boy, they let three seconds yeah, come right? off of that clock. Those are a valuable three seconds because they're out of timeout. So even if he misses this free throw, they got to get the ball. Uh, one of these two free throws, they got to get the ball to the front court awfully quick and try to get up a two or a three. Important for Drexel to knock both of these down. Oh, crucial, like it was for Milstead. Demley countered for the Broncos. Halfway in before it squirted back out, so Lopes know what they're facing here. Don't want to give up a three or a two. Better to go to overtime than lose on a three. And that's it. Here they come. Four, three, two. Driving. Dembley. The shot clock and it's burned. Lopes win. Lopes win. The Lopes win. What a basketball game. I tell you what, Lopes did not have their A game tonight. They showed a lot of heart, stayed with it, fought out the victory. Kate Longwood. All right, thank you guys. Well, Kate, coming back off of Wooden Legacy and coming back to your home court. How satisfying is it right now to get the victory for the Lopes? I barely heard a word you said. All I heard was satisfying, and it is very satisfying. It's a great win for our program. And we grind it out for 40 minutes, that's all we got to do. Doesn't matter how we get the win, we just got to get it done. And what's it mean to you? Dan Marley has called you the heart and soul of this team. Tonight, you have your family in the stands. It's your final season in the Lopes uniform, and you guys are going up against some top-tier caliber competition. What's it mean to you to be on the court tonight with that W? It means the world. Winning these games, I don't care who we play. If we win this game, I love it. I love winning more than anything. So, uh... I'm just so grateful we got this win, that's all I can say. Congratulations and keep it up. Thank you. Jared Martin stepping it up defensively. That second unit was the story here tonight. A huge fifth victory of the season for GCU over Boise State, 69-67. Upcoming the post-game press conference with head coach Dan Marlin. Our final stats, our player of the game, and much more. Look win. Over Boise State, keep it right here. As a teacher, your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career while also making sure you have time for yourself and your family. Today, you can learn anywhere and anytime, giving kids a look into the technological advances that pushed you forward. Being strong and compassionate makes you a role model through this formative period in their lives. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders and innovators to reach for their dreams. You're giving them the tools they need to achieve them. 
Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. We have been the experts in clean since 1945. We help businesses keep their facilities cleaner, healthier, greener, and safer. We are passionate about what we do and are committed to making your workplace environment the cleanest and healthiest it can be. Welcome back to GCU Arena, 69-67, the Lopes prevail over Boise State. Barry Butel, Scott Williams back upstairs. Wow, that was, uh, that was a bit of a nail biter. That was, a, a, that was kind of a fun. That, was, that a was fun. I tell you what, that got the heart uh, pumping, the blood flowing. Let's take a look at our Canyon State Credit Union player of the game. Canyon State Credit Union committed to you, Damari Milstead. Oh, Milstead was absolutely fantastic. I mean, this bench was 16 to 23 from the field with 39 points, and Milstead was a big reason why. He really got everybody involved. He penetrated to the basket. He got in the passing lane. He knocked down the outside shots. He got himself to the free throw line where he was four Watch. or five, where everybody else was struggling tonight. Uh, I just love the way this kid came and, and played tonight. He really brought his A game when the starters were struggling. Four or five, as you mentioned, from the free throw line. Three assists, 13 points off of the bench. And you cannot say enough about the GCU bench and how deep it is because it has been a story here throughout the early part of the season. They have been critical to their successes for five victories. Yeah, their plus minus was off the chart. Three players, a plus 18 off the bench. Milstead, a plus 13. So they really did a nice job. I mean, Martin giving up his body. Yeah. Just a, a one-man wrecking ball there on the defensive end. Let's take a look at our final stats in this two-point victory for the Lopes over Boise State. Field goal percentage, 48-45. We'll take that. 7 to 23 from the arc. Free throws, they rebounded late, 10 of 18. Bench points, man, 39-13. Yeah, that's a look at your final stats now inside of the post-game press conference. Here's head coach Dan Marley. We need that. I'll move it up. Okay. Well, coach, we saw your emotion right away on the court, but what was it like in the locker room just moments ago? With your uh, team? Guys were extremely happy, which they should be. Um, that's a good. I said that's a really good Boise State team. Really good. Very talented. Uh, well coached. Uh, been a good program for a long time. So we knew this was going to be a tough game, and our guys battled, and we found a way to win one. We've, we've been losing a couple of those lately, and uh, found a way to get a stop and made some big baskets. So just happy. Guys have worked hard. We have a long way to go, but man, they worked hard, and uh, that second group really scrapped and had some great performances. So um, that's what it's about. Just finding a way to win. Good team win. It was a, a great effort, like you mentioned about the bench, but they dug you out of huge holes both halves. What, what was the difference with them? Well, they just, you know, they, we, they go a little smaller and we switch and they get down and guard. And that's, they, that's their identity. That's what they do. They, they've done it since day one. And uh, their job is to come in and change the game. And they needed to change the game in a hurry. And they got us out of that hole. And, uh, you know, Matt and Jared, uh, something to be said for guys who've been here for five years. Um, they're big culture guys, uh, know how I work, know how this team works. And they did an unbelievable job. Uh, everybody did. And, uh, you know, for like Michael and Tim and Ollie and those guys, they're just going to have to bounce back because we're going to need them. But uh, that's just, that's team basketball, guys stepping up and playing well. What's it like for you to have so many weapons, as you call it, your first team, your second team, and to be able to mix and well, match like that? I don't know like if they're that? weapons. We, uh, bodies, uh, we have to play better. Um, there's just no if ands, buts about it. Um, but there's a lot of guys we can throw out there. We can give different looks, which is nice. And uh, like I said, I'm happy for Matt. You know, Matt's been injured and battled through a lot of stuff. And Jared, I said, is a culture guy. And uh, just uh, he gives uh, his all every day in practice. And, you know, Damari's worked hard. Uh, so I'm just happy for everybody. And as I said, the guys who didn't get it done tonight are just going to have to bounce back because we're going to need them uh, the next game. Damari and Carlos combining for 27 points. What do you see fueling their success tonight? And uh, how do they work together? You know, Carlos has struggled early, but he's starting to round into shape. He's starting to figure out how he has to play. Um, he'd be aggressive, take the ball to basket. He's a hard matchup when he takes the ball to basket. And then he can start pulling up a little bit. But uh, he's starting to figure it out. And that's good. And, 
you know, Damari's been here for, uh, you know, a year and a half now, and he's a big part of coming off the bench and giving us another ball handler, a very good on-ball defender, and smart. So I'm happy for all those guys. You talked a lot about concentration and focus on details. Did you see that in no. the finish today? Did you see 23 stealing the ball every time? <laughs> we actually covered that. Every film I watched, I said, Williams is going to shoot the gap and steal every entry pass in your man. And we gave away three or four of those tonight. So a little better, but we still have to, uh, those are the little things that are going to hurt you. So, um, you know, I tell our guys, players have to be players. And sometimes you just got to make plays. And tonight they made plays. What do you get? What's the value in them having this feeling about closing out a game like this? Because well, the same value thing is, is we, got a, we, we got a heck of a stretch coming. We, we don't want to lose at home. I don't care. Against who. We knew this was going to be a hard game, but uh, we don't ever want to disappoint this crowd, the, the support that we get night in and night out. Uh, we want to make sure we win games here. And that's the most important thing um, to me. And then when you're going on a road trip where you're playing Nevada and Texas and Northern Iowa, and then you go to San Diego, and then, you know, I mean, that's tough enough. You've got to win your home games, that's for sure. So that's a good way to uh, get a feeling of, of closing out a close game and especially battling back. I mean, it looked uh, dire straights there at the first half. And then the second half, they started off strong. We had to, you know, dig ourselves out again. Tough game, and you chose to go back to him there for offense down the stretch. Yeah, you, you know, know Ali, this is a hard game for him and Michael. Um, guarding smaller guys, and, you know, Ali just couldn't get in a rhythm. And, and, you know, they, it was such a big hole. I had to make a lineup, a lineup change, and I tell those guys all the time, the guys who are, you know, getting it done on the floor are going to play, and they deserve to play. This is about GCU. It's not about anybody else. But you're going to give Ali a chance down the stretch because he's our, he's our best player. He's our best offensive player. So... Uh, he made a big bucket down there, uh, backed the guy in, and made a huge shot. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Post-game press conference, head coach Dan Marley talking about, uh, it's interesting, you know, we talked about uh, Williams and th things he's still telling the team about those uh, those inbounds, and uh, he came up with five steals, and, and he knew that, uh, that this team needed to guard against that. Yeah, it still they, happened. they had 13 fast breaks uh, points as a result, and I think Williams had probably 10 of those on, on slams. Quality player, R.J. Williams for Boise State. They should be uh, heard from this season in the Mountain West Conference. Time now to revisit our Sanderson Ford. Three keys to the game, Scott. Well, I, I thought it was, you know, we're going to break the Broncos, go inside and score. They didn't win the uh, battle of the paint, but they had 28 of their 69 points in the paint, which is a nice percentage. And they had 12 uh, second chance points. They cowboyed up a little bit as well. They took care of the basketball for the most part. Uh, I would have liked to see them uh, do a little bit better job of creating some more fast break buckets out of those turnovers. But I love the fact that they were uh, the second team really brought it uh, on the defensive end. They were the real Cowboys tonight. And then Ford Tough. They did not exactly have their A game, but mentally, when we talk about being tough, they battled through some tough times out there on the floor. No one hanging their head. No one splintered. They rallied together as a team, especially that second unit. A lot of credit for those, go, go to those guys for the victory tonight. No doubt. They needed to win here. They needed to win on their home court. This crowd was into it. It was packed. It was a whiteout. It was filled to capacity. This one kind of hopefully will fuel the momentum. They know, need to know that they have some things to correct. That first unit needs to step up, but they're taking on a very tough Nevada team coming up next Sunday. Yeah, get a little rest uh, tonight, tomorrow. Some, some free throws for sure. Yeah, yeah no doubt about it. Hey, fans, we want to have you and come out to Talking Stick Arena downtown as the fifth-ranked Nevada Wolfpack next Sunday. Entertain the Lopes and the Jerry Colangelo Classic at the Talking Stick Resort Arena. 3.30 tip-off. Tickets available online. Our next GCU men's basketball game on your view will be Saturday, December 22nd when Mississippi Valley Delta Devils pay a return trip to Phoenix to take on the Lopes. Kate will head up the uh, star-studded Lopes pregame show 6.30 and then tip off shortly after at 7. You can also watch online at GCU.tv and listen to Michael Potter and Tom Kuyper on the Fanatic 1580 AM 99.3 FM. Rumor has it that it's ugly Christmas sweater night for the crew. Yeah, Looking yeah. forward to that. That'll do it from here at GC Arena with the Lopes beat the Broncos 69-67. Hope to see you at Talking Stick Arena December 9th. GCU and Nevada, please join us again December 22nd. Lopes taking on Mississippi Valley State. But until then, for Kate Longwood, Scott Williams, and our entire phenomenal crew, I'm Barry Butel wishing you a wonderful evening.